Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Fresh Out the Box Plays Cyberpunk Red. I am the Game Master Jahananan, uh, and we will be playing Cyberpunk Red for you. Take it away, Gary. I'm Casualty CDG, but you can call me Gary, and tonight I'll be playing the part <clears throat> of the lawman Montana Jack Calloway. I got tied up in this with uh, my driver friend Levi, and uh, with the Corpo, and with the Rocker Boy. And we're tied up in a drug scheme. There we go. I am I remembered everybody's classes without looking. I feel so proud. Layton? Yeah, and I'm Levite. Uh, yeah, I got dragged into this because of Montana. I tried not to show up, but they, uh, you know, better late than never. That's what I always say. Um, so, yeah, I'll be Levite. Uh, I'm the driver. Uh, I help them get out of trouble when they're in trouble, and that's what I do. Uh, you want to take it away? I'm Kevin. I will be playing three and a third, who is a corpo sociopath. Um, I'm in it for my own personal reasons, uh, but I've linked up with these guys, found them to be as agreeable as, you know, as a sociopath can find another individual or a group of individuals. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll see where it uh, goes from here. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, I'm Matt, uh, but I'm also Brecht, who is a rocker boy artist who takes trash and turns it into art. And uh, I got into this because this corpo and this lawman uh, came across my friend's dead body. And uh, now I'm, I'm looking for answers. I'm so happy everybody remembers everything. That's good. We're off to a good start tonight, boys. Before I give the recap of our last time, I will give a brief history lesson about... Uh, the world of Cyberpunk Red, so that everybody can just, uh, us and the viewers can get a little more acquainted with uh, the setting. So by 1994, the number of homeless on the streets had skyrocketed to 21 million. The technical revolution had further torn the econo uh, economy apart. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to say two words once. Creating two radically divergent classes, a wealthy, technical, uh, technically oriented materially acquisis uh, acquisitive uh, group of corporate professionals and a down class of homeless, unskilled, blue-collar workers. Uh, the middle class was nearly eradicated. Uh, it was the dismal beginning that led to the American landscape of the 2000s. It's not far off from <laughs> our reality. Uh, so if anyone wants to gaze into the future, stay tuned! Uh... To see oh, what no. happens next in human F. society. F. Watch out on September 11th. <laughs> Watch out. Right. Oh. Don't go to work. In this <laughs> setting, something like that had already happened before the millennium. Yes, it, it happened in like 1994. It happened. Uh, it the original because there was in real life there was actually two attacks. Uh, that I know of, uh, but obviously September 11th, everyone knows, but there was also a uh, attempt to blow up underneath with a, uh, I think a car bomb uh, in the parking garage of the World Trade Center, and that was successful in uh, Cyberpunk Red setting, so a little different. Which it is, I do love that, and, and not, not to not to keep uh, harping on, on stuff like this, but the, the cyberpunk red, like when this was written, when the original idea was written based on what has actually progressed so far, like sci-fi is sometimes just really on point in some really cool and scary ways. And that's one of the things that I love about this game is we're playing, we're playing a future that is not altogether yeah, man. <laughs> out of the question. Life, life imitates art, man. Uh, that's, a, that's a, like a whole thing. Yeah, sci-fi uh, influences uh, technological advancement all the time. All the time, all the time. I think when I was a kid, I heard it best described as science fiction becomes science fact. Yes, yep. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, very much so. But yeah, so last time on Cyberpunk Red, uh, our intrepid little group of uh, assholes, honestly, uh, <laughs> got into some shit. Uh, let's see. It started off uh, in a hotel room where they were trying to get information out of a pusher uh, for the Tiger Claws, who was selling stuff he wasn't supposed to be selling. Uh, during this interrogation session, the Tiger Claws broke in and killed the would-be drug dealer uh, for daring to sell uh, this 
new drug in their territory. Uh, after that, everybody got into it, and uh, three and a thirds had an epic sword battle with a man on a train, and it was cool. And Brecht slammed that emergency brake, and everybody skedaddled. Uh, they went into hiding. Uh, Brecht wound up creating some fans as kind of a cover in the Tiger Claw territory so they could get away. You were all still being hunted by Tiger Claws. Not maybe like very, like, it's not very focused, but there is one man in particular that would love to cut off your head. Uh, oh, jeez. Someone opened the garage beneath me. That was weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, uh, that's what happened, and then after that, you guys stuck, uh, did a stakeout of the drop point that, uh, this drug dealer, Quicks, said that he was using. Uh, there you notice somebody watching. And when you tried to investigate, he was also killed, uh, by an assassin. And then an epic boat chase, uh, ensued, which culminated in three and a thirds and the assailant going end over end uh, across the bay on a jet ski. It was pretty cool. Uh, everyone survived, luckily, with some good rolls uh, and some uh, grappling hand action. Uh, and now you have unmasked this uh, female assassin. Uh, she has a, she has kind of, she has uh, darker features, uh, a bit of a Middle Eastern aesthetic to her. Vibrant uh, purple, light up hair, uh, which is kind of dimmed right now. It's not on all the way. She turned it on dim setting uh, for assassinating. <laughs> <laughs> I switch my hair to assassinate mode. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that is where we pick up. You gentlemen have this woman in custody. Uh, it is up to you where you want to take her, what you want to do with her, the line of questioning, and what becomes of her in the end. Uh, we'll open up still on Levite's boat. All right. I got no idea what's going on here. Um, someone's going to have to catch me up about who this girl is, but I am happy to interrogate her. This is my boat, after all. It's, it's actually, not my you boat. You actually stole it, yeah, boy. <laughs> Yeah. For all for all intents and purposes, that is your boat. For right? all intensive purposes, you know, I'm not intensive. sure if she knows. I'm not sure if she knows exactly who she killed or why she killed them. Do you know who gave you this assassination, ma'am? Uh, she she looks at you. Uh, she kind of squints at you, and she doesn't want to talk. She she, but what you say throws her a little bit. Hey, why were you thrown? What's up? You can talk to me. Come on. It's just me. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, she, I mean, she'll look at you. You can try to, like, charm her. You can try to persuade her. You can do any of those roles that you feel like doing. Uh, just let me know what you, you plan on. Oh. I'm persuading her. Ooh. And I literally put it in the chat right now. Yeah. And, uh... Hey, let, let me, me tell you. Character sheet work. That's dope. Yeah, I know, right? I, yeah, I've been working on it uh, this whole time. Uh, wow, that was that, quick. That, I'm impressed. That's honestly uh, what I've been doing. A 19 persuasion. Uh, you'll see her kind of... Uh, her. She softens visibly a little bit, and she like kind of looks around. Uh, she I mean, look at us. Still look at us. We're a ragtag group. We're not looking to hurt anybody. We're looking to, you know, we're, gonna look, we're looking after our own, and, uh, and that's that. And you could be our own, uh, or you could... You know, we're surrounded by water, and that's no good. And I don't well, want to do that. I hate to, I hate to interrupt you, Levite, but it's, when it's not that we're not looking to hurt anybody. We already cut one guy's head off and threw it at his friend and brought another guy a human leg. We'll definitely hurt people. We're trying to figure out who's behind these drugs, and I'll take the vial out and show it to her. At that, uh, she's definitely very confused now. But you're trying to stop the drugs? That's what she I'm asks. Gonna... I'm going to look to three and a thirds. Three and a third. You, I imagine, work for a corporation. Mind sharing that information with us as to which one? I don't work for a corp. Who hired you then? No one hired me. Well, then why are you doing what you're doing? I'm trying to get to the bottom of this as well. 
Interesting. For what reason? Yeah, now that you guys have kind of shared, uh, I wasn't I wasn't sure if you guys would share your agenda, and I thought that this misunderstanding might go on for a little longer, but uh, she'll simply say vengeance. That's hmm. so sick. She looks very determined. I'm going to try to read her body language and see if she's uh, full of it. Maybe she's yanking our chain. Yeah, go ahead. It is I'd like to yank my chain. I'm sorry. That was inappropriate. I'm I rolled totes an, an 11. Like, a woman's been on screen for five minutes. Come on. Uh, <laughs> 11. Human perception. <laughs> Poor Lee. Uh, <laughs> what perception. other kind of so perception 11. is there, Montana? 11. She is a lock. <laughs> she's a lockbox. It's hard to read her. She's very stoic. You do gather stoicism from her. She's uh, not giving. She doesn't seem scared at all by you guys. Uh, you can tell that. Uh, so what you're telling me? What, what what you're telling me? Um, very nice lady. Uh, is that we're on the same side? We're both trying to stop this thing. Uh, if <laughs> I need to soften my voice a little bit, I can't be so gruff with her. Uh, uh, she sounds just like you, John. She sounds just like... Yeah, no. Uh, so, if what you're telling me is true, then I guess maybe. Sick. How can I trust you? Well, I'm no stranger to vengeance. Maybe we can uh, help each other out. You got, it's, a thin, it's a thin line between vengeance and justice, and honestly, I live my life on the vengeance side of that line. There's a thin Count line. Between, there's a thin line between most things, Montana. No, count me in on the vengeance. Uh, <clears throat> at, at your offer to uh, help each other, she'll like lift her handcuffed hands behind her back and be like, eh? you, "You know that guy you shot was our last lead." He was the lookout for the drop point. I was just trying to get another pusher off the streets. Yeah, one by one is not the most effective way to do that, just gotta say. She'll kind of... She'll give you a, an irritated glance at that. Uh, yes. Somebody take a look at her agent before we let her out of these cuffs. See if you can cross-reference any data with that and uh, the phone of the guy who she blew a hole in the head of. This I'll take in a contact. In contact. <clears throat> is that what you're looking I'll for? definitely take her agent and okay. go through it. See if they were in contact or if they have a mu any mutual friends or anything in their texts. Uh, it is locked <clears throat> with a code. She'll look at you though, <clears throat> and she'll tell you the code. It's a name uh, of a. Of a male person, you can tell by the name. That's all you know, and a couple numbers. Uh, like how do we know? How do we know he works for the postal service just based on his name? Uh, his name is uh, Male McMahon. Yeah. <laughs> male or okay. Male man. Yep, that doesn't. <laughs> is is he the lesser known son of Vince? <laughs> Vince McMahon. <laughs> Vince McMahon. <laughs> male McMahon. The uh, the owner of the WWE, Vince McMahon. Man? Vince McMahon, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's where he got his name. I just did the uh, what do you call it? I did the wrong thing because it's hard to do the Vince McMahon thing. Yeah, it's hard to do the Vince walk while you're sitting down. You're not wrong. For all of our wrestling fans out there, it's a full it's a full body. Uh, we'll, we'll just say for reference, a guy's walking that way across the pier right now, just doing a new 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 new. Money, 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 money. But yeah, uh, so <laughs> she tells you the passcode to the phone. Uh, you can search through it. It's very minimal. It's like she wiped it at one point. Uh, but you don't see, she didn't call this guy or anything, but you do see some like research of how she got to this point uh, and like the path she followed here. So based on that information, I could see where she came from. Like, in what regards? Oh, like if she is telling the truth about being a corpo or anything? Well, no, just you said that I could see the path she took to get to this port, which means she's not from here. Can I see, based on this agent, where she is from? Uh, it seems that her activity gravitates towards the uh, 
the suburb part of town. Uh, not the, the trailer park, but around there. The agent's clean. Nothing here. I'll toss it back to her. Well, I guess at her and at her because she can't get it. Yeah, I was going to say she catches it. She bounces it off of her chest and grabs it with her lap. Uh, so let me guess. Let me guess. New drugs come into your neighborhood and people start overdosed and start dying. Something. You track it down. This is as far as you got. Mm, something like all right. Well, it happened in my neck of the woods, and it killed his friend, wherever he's at. It killed his friend, and the drugs belong to his company. So we're all going to try to figure this out together. Whoever's cutting these drugs is killing folks. Did he kill anybody before he died? She'll say about his, uh, your friend, Brecht. Oh. Um, to your knowledge, no. To your knowledge, no. Okay. Um, and it's a no. weird question. I mean, that why, why, why would my buddy do that? I mean, uh, she gives you a quizzical that. look now. Uh, like it's <laughs> what the drug does. Hmm. You have you seen you seen the after effects, but you haven't seen anyone on it mm -hmm. before. Um, and you're not exactly sure what it does. Well, I can tell you, the young man we found didn't have any blood on his nails, no bruising on his fingertips, so. I think he's in the clear. This is news to us. All of his muscles were like exploded, though. It's yeah, like, they were. He was much larger than he should have been. Yeah, also, he didn't have any defensive or offensive wounds. Uh, correct. But she's like, huh? I guess people got lucky then. <laughs> you seem to know more about the drug than most people. Tell me what you know. <clears throat> I don't know where my brother got a hold of it, but. He started getting agitated at home. Hmm. Your brother, that must be, and I repeat the name back to her from the password, that must be Isaiah. <laughs> She'll shoot you a sad glance, uh, but doesn't confirm or deny. Uh, he was agitated, and I hid. Uh, but I came out of my hiding spot after I heard... Uh, our parents screaming. But I couldn't bring All myself right. to put him down. I'll put, pick her up and uncuff her. Okay. Or, you know, help her stand up and uncuff. His face. Uh, she'll say that and then just stare off. Thousand yard stare. What's your name, ma'am? Jamila. I'm gonna run her through my agent, through the law enforcement database and see if there was a murder at her address that matches those descriptions. That there matches it was. The... Cool. And she's uh, she's wanted for questioning on those. Obviously. Yeah. Alright. So, just a heads up, next time you come across any lawmen, they're going to detain you for questioning in regards to the murder. Uh, if you stay with us, I'll make sure nobody hassles you. She'll look you up and down and kind of put two and two together. <laughs> She'll just nod. But yeah, so Honestly, I'm glad you guys uh, didn't immediately shoot her kneecaps off. I uh, appreciate it. Good job. I feel like you guys are growing as people. Uh, but yeah, so what is your next course of action? This, you, you gained information out of this, uh, but you're not exactly sure how it's going to go forward. How would you like to proceed? I still have no idea what's going on. So, uh, my friends, Jamil, the Montana, uh, three and a third, and uh, big scary guy, uh, take it away. <clears throat> Jamila, what was your what was your next plan of action, Jamila? I'm actually just curious here. I was going to try and find the next guy up. So you are taking them down one by one. Trying to head to the top and find out where it's coming from now. No one seems to know. No one? You <laughs> haven't gotten any leads so far? No. That was my no. last lead. If, if you should stop shooting your leads. I only shot him because I thought that they got to him first. 
She thought, yeah, she thought you guys were involved, and that's why she took the shot. Well, that's good. Fair. And the misunderstanding has been corrected, and that was the first and last time that it will happen. You know, we did have a lead with Maelstrom pretty early on. Maelstrom. Maelstrom. Hmm. We followed this route as far as it would take us, and we chased all the peddlers and dealers down to this dock. Now, we know drugs are getting in that bag, and we don't know how they're getting in that bag, but we think it had something to do with the guy whose head you blew off. So, with him missing out of the puzzle, I'm not sure they'll show back up to this dead drop point. They may show up at a funeral, which we could attend, for their fallen comrade, <laughs> Tiger Claws. We... <laughs> we can post up and give it a shot, but this guy's low down on the totem pole. But I'm not opposed to shooting up a funeral. The guy, <clears throat> the second guy that died, uh, that she shot, was not a tiger claw. He was a. Uh, uh, he yeah, he, he, he wasn't right. flying any flag in particular. He wasn't an affiliate of anything. He kind of he just seemed like a dock worker, really. Uh, that was doing a job. Were we able to verify if he was on payroll, if he was a real person? Uh, you guys haven't really got, had a chance to dig into him too much yet. Yeah, I suppose that's a good lead then. That is a good lead. Even though yeah. it's a lead with no head, and I look back over at her again. She'll just kind of throw her hands up. Anybody have speak with dead? Uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, I, you know, I can commune with the uh, <laughs> some of the old gods. I'm just fucking kidding. I'm Jewish. I'm not a fucking necromancer. Who the fuck are you? Come on. I work with the soulless every single day of my life, but they're not demons. They're bins. Wow. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, three and a third. Bring in the hard stuff. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, if you guys want to investigate this guy further, uh, I think you left the body on the docks. Mm -hmm. So if you want any of that, uh, you'd have to head back. Well, I'm going to start driving, and we'll see if we can find them. Uh, okay. uh, so, yeah, you're going to pull up to the uh, the area where this whole chase started. Um, just for, like, re your own reference, uh, the canals are, like, up above you. You guys are in a canal. Uh, it's a channel that is big enough for, for shipping boats to come on, uh, load and unload. Uh, not the biggest of them, but some of them. And you're in your boat down below the docks where all this started. Um, there are people milling about up there. You can't tell exactly who. Uh, they could be. They, they seem authority figure style. You know, there's there's a bit of a tension uh, when you get when the sh the docks got shot up. Uh, hey, cut the engines and lay low. These these uh, they may be on the same payroll as the guys we're looking for. Um. It, uh. How far? Uh, how far up is the body? Like, uh, is it concealed? Do we think it might still be there? Uh. You, you. The people are standing near where the body is. Oh well. Shit. Um. But it's up. It's elevated. It's like uh, ten feet. It's like a one and a half story uh, fall from the top of the docks to the water. Uh, hey Montana. Montana, you look like a cop, right? Sure. Uh, could uh, could we possibly assist you in a little uh, little decoy saying that we're the we're officers of the law and we need access to the body? I look at Brecht, and then I look at three and a third. I'm like, maybe you, Levite, but the other two aren't going to pass. Three and a third smells like a corpo, and I don't think Brecht could. Uh, <laughs> I don't think authority is really his thing. <laughs> I think uh, I think three and a third smells very nice. Thank you. Um, hey, corpos smell like lavender, but they still smell like corpos. They don't stink like the street like the rest of us. You're damn fucking right. All right, Montana. Well, uh, we could do it if if y'all think that's a good plan. I'm honestly going with the democratic uh, <laughs> response here. I, I ain't looking to make any big decisions myself. You guys have been pretty uh, democratic in your decision making so far. So yeah. How would you like to go about, about this, gentlemen? What about our assassin friend here? Could we pretend that the officer has her under arrest? I'd rather not show her face to everybody if it can be avoided. You could uh, pretend that I'm under arrest as well. 
All we need is access to the body. They might buy that. You are an asshole. You are. But I also don't want to frame you for murder. Mm. Yeah. Uh, You can, from down here, you can tell that they're loading up the corpse. Oh, on a meat wagon. Montana, go flash your badge and stop them. Yeah, it's now and never. All we need is access for a little bit, so we can uh, we can get some information on on this guy's agent, Jump right? Off the boat and, <clears throat> Jamila uh, will chime in. Uh, Jamila will chime in at this. Uh, it might be a good thing. They're probably not guarding the uh, the hearse. Sweet, let's go. Maybe we can intercept it. Oh, you're talking to like. Oh, you're. I see now. You're talking about my. You're talking about my shit. All That's right. In that case, shit. let's leave the boat. Everybody, come on. I'll cause a distraction. Everybody, bail into the hearse, and we'll get out of here. Uh, and here's the keys to the truck. And I throw the keys to that big fucking box truck to Brecht. If you need yeah. to move that truck out of the way, it'll give us a quick exit. Yeah, Should we take both vehicles for security and decoys purposes? I don't see why not. We might even be able to put uh, put the hearse in the back of the truck, make it disappear. Oh, dip. So we'll, I love. I'll go with Brecht, and we'll find an alleyway, and you guys can drive the hearse to meet it, and we'll swap the body into the truck from there. I love it. Jamil, you coming with me? You coming with me in Montana? She'll shrug, and then she'll follow you. Okay, yeah, that's that's a better answer than just a shrug. I didn't know, honestly, didn't I? Didn't know what you were saying. You know, you shrug. You know, shrug couldn't mean anything. All right, ready, break, <laughs> break. There you go. Okay, yeah. So go ahead. Uh, so uh, Levite and Montana and Jamila are intercepting the hearse. Yeah. In what vehicle? On foot right now. I'm gonna walk up and flash my badge and stop them before they leave and start talking. While I'm doing that, Levite and uh, her Jamil Jamil are going to Jamila or Jamil? They're going to dive it. They're going to get the the hearse. I'm going to get in the hearse, then we're going to meet up with the other guys. Okay. We're going to steal the car right out from under them right now. Yeah. Bye, boat. Uh, I will miss you. So so you guys walk up to this hearse. Uh, Go ahead and get um, me Jahan, I know it's a long shot, but yeah, uh, shot. Yeah, what? Uh, but I do. Uh, is there anything that I can, uh, considering I have had access to this boat now for a while, um, can I put a little, little, little brain, put a little tracker in there so that I know where it is? Um, even though I stole it once already, maybe, uh, maybe I'll just know where it is. Yeah, we'll just say you download the code or whatever. Cool. Uh, yes. It's not too weird of a thing to know odds, so. odds are it'll be wiped before uh you know as soon as the person finds their their boat but hey maybe if we need access to a boat i might be able to find it <laughs> in the all right i'm putting it in my inventory so you 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 yeah all right that's that's all i got yeah you got it in your inventory it's good sorry something happened in the thing uh but yeah so uh montana you approach the driver of this thing. They're loading, uh, they just finished loading the body, they just closed it up. Uh, they don't look like what you and I would consider, like, a hearse driver. They look like people, they look like plumbers wearing jumpsuits. It's very, uh, matter-of-fact-y kind of stuff. Night City PD! What do you boys think you're doing? Uh, we didn't get any crime scene photos. You can't touch a body, move a body until the police are on scene. I'm not going to make you drag that body back out, but the two of you might as well go for coffee or a smoke break while I finish up here. There will be, there will be, you, you'll, uh, one of them will be like a deer caught in the headlights. He's younger. Uh, he might be new. The other guy, he's a short Danny DeVito looking, uh, balding guy in a jumpsuit, greasy, uh, kind of thing. He's like, hey, let me handle this, Jimmy. Hey, looky here, Mr. Coppa. Those guys over there already got all the evidence they needed, all right? Don't, I don't need you to be telling me how to be doing my jobs is, coming down here. What to is it, your anniversary or something? What do you have to do? What do you have that's so busy tonight you got to run off to? You get paid overtime. Hey, Take I have. Take a break. <laughs> Buy a sandwich. I got a TV me, dinner and, I, I and a Playboy with my bucks. name on it when I get home, all right? They're champ, all right? So I got to get home to what I'm going to do. I, Hey, hey, my friend, believe it or not, this guy right here, this big guy right here, he's the good cop. I'm the bad one, okay? We do not have time to mess with your shit. 
Get out of the car so we can get our evidence and we can get you home to your stupid TV uh, dinner. Point of clarification, they are not they're in the back of the car. They're like standing. They just finished putting it in the back. Oh. So uh, well, then I'm getting in the driver's seat. That's what I figured you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the box truck, I imagine we were able to hear the conversation, Brecht and I standing by the box truck. Yeah, uh, there are some guys over there. Um, right, so he's the dock worker, or the sorry, the Hearst plumber. Hearst um, yeah, plumber. Hearst plumber. <laughs> Hearst plumber. He, <laughs> he mentioned that those guys over there got all the information they need. Yeah. So I'm going to look at Brecht and kind of nod over in the direction of those guys and see what he thinks about going over there to confront them they do at this distance they you can tell that uh they they definitely are police officers uh they're not uniformed officers but they they strike you they look like detectives you know in that like they're wearing that like noir garb and that uh that whole thing one of them has a toothpick in his mouth uh the other one's a shorter guy skinny uh, but that they, they did, they are looking at some photos on a camera, and there's like the chalk um, outline because I like the chalk outline thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to walk over with Brecht if he's joining me and try to uh, demand that the photos are property of the corporation. Go by yourself, third. I don't want to get detected. They're not looking for anything that you'd have. I thought you hated them. This is your time to muscle them out if we need to. All right. This might get interesting. It might get spicy. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, so, yeah, you approach. What I want is... to approach calmly, though, not aggressively. I don't want to, like, demand the photos, but I want to walk up to them and, you know, do the corpo introduction. <clears throat> you'll, you'll over here and be like, hell of a shot, man. Hell of a shot. Boom. Snap right through the cerebellum. Look at that. Jeez. Poor bastard. Never saw it coming. That's what you walk up on. Gentlemen, might I ask for a moment? Uh, they'll turn and one will be like, "Hey, whoa, hey, active crime scene here." What? what, what? And then oh, like, don't he'll, worry. he'll look at you, and you look like a fucking corpo. Uh, and he'll kind of he'll bite back a little bit because he's unsure of where you stand or who you are. What did he say? I'm sorry. Uh, he said, hey, it's active crime scene here, but then when he sees you, he kind of trails off. Oh, I'm fully aware of what the situation concerning this scene is. Thank you, detective. Just like I could spot you from a mile away, as could my friend here with his untrained eyes. However, I pose no threat to you. I am here to unfortunately deliver bad news. Those photos are property of my corporation, and I will need to take them from you now that you've gotten from them what you can. Uh, so when this is going on, I'll turn to the hearse plumber and I'll let the hearse plumber know the same thing and be like, Hey, you heard what the corpo said. The body doesn't go anywhere until the corpos are done with it. Like I said, you guys could take yourselves a lunch break. I'll give you 40 eddies. Go buy yourself a sandwich. A big sandwich. Uh, That's a huge sandwich. I hey, should buy a sandwich for him, his friend, two playboys, and another TV dinner. Like, hey, man, I can't do anything unless the corpo signs this order right here, man. This thing, I got this thing toe tag set up for a locker in the freezer. I'll take it from him and walk it over to three and a third. Yeah, he, he wants you to sign this piece of paper releasing the body into your custody. Did we get the photos from the detective? They have not handed them over yet. One of them uh, is looking at you. The one that hesitated uh, clams up. The other one, uh, he's the bigger one, uh, I'd be like, what corporation is that? Well, when Montana walks up with the paperwork, I'm going to look at Montana, look back at the hesitant one, and then look back at Montana and sign the paper. And then I'm going to just look at him and flatly tell him, an unnamed pharmaceutical company. I said, actually, well, you're detectives, and we're on the same side, so I'll be frank with you. I work with Orion Pharmaceutical. Boom. Yeah, I'm glad you remembered the name. Uh, they'll look at each other. Like, huh. I'll walk away with the clipboard and back to the other guys. <clears throat> uh, one of them will just... He'll just, like, swipe uh, a thing on the uh, camera, and it'll, like, shoot it to your agent. 
And then I'd be like, I guess, all right, well. Meet back here in two hours. Take an hour and a half. Uh, the bigger one will stop three and a third. be like, what's your name? I need my report. Hmm. On the report, you can put the name down as Liz Tobin. I understand how paperwork works. This is no mystery to me. I'm sure you'll find this more helpful for the amount of paperwork you have to do, and myself as well. He'll kind of like, he'll slap the other guy on the chest and be like, look at this guy. And then the other guy's like shaking his head like, nah, man, like, shut up. <laughs> like, one of them takes you less seriously, the other one is kind of scared. Uh, but yeah, so Liz Tobin, you do tell him the name of your supervisor uh, instead of your own name, which is fine. And they won't question it any further. Uh, but they're going to continue to mill about the crime scene. May I pick up some scraps from the crime scene to use for art later? Yeah, man, you can do whatever you want. Oh, Sick was... motherfucker. <laughs> uh, so... Yo, not a little bit not... particularly crime related as that evidence has been collected. Sure. Uh, but you could get like doc stuff. Ooh. Nice. So I want to walk the photos that I've just gotten over to Montana. Okay. But I want to. How many are there? Uh, there's just like, I don't know, like 16 different angles. Oh. They have the little. Uh, they have. It's not, they don't have the little flags on them for size reference. They have, like, digital ones that are, like, holographic. Cause it's are weird. they numbered or lettered or in, in any sort yeah, of way? Yeah, they're numbered. One, okay, two, then three, I want to I want to walk over and give the pictures to Montana. But on my way over, I want to take the last four chronologically off the stack and deposit them in my own, I don't know, prison wallet or whatever I have. <laughs> Flesh pocket. With yeah, real it's all, it's all on your phone, so you can send him what you want and keep what you want and make copies if you want. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I'll just flash him over. Well, in that case, I'll just send him all of them and then also send the rest of them to Liz. Okay. I'm, I'm going to ask over comms. Hey, do we have uh, do we have any tech heads over here? Do we have any, like, really good hackers? Who are you asking? I'm asking us. Okay. I'm asking this crew. Uh, I could take a look at it, but not the best. Nah, because I, honestly, I think uh, I think the uh, best plan of action is to just take the whole freaking hearse. But if we do that, we got to make sure that we we completely wipe it of any tracking of any uh, of anything that uh, that it could be tracked <laughs> by the by just the ditch it in the ocean or light it on fire I and mean, drive it into so, a canyon. So the two guys are going to unload the body at this because the plan kind of changed because you guys got them all to agree and buy your bullshit uh but they're not gonna leave the hearse with you oh that's fair so we just got the body yeah. that's fine yeah. i don't get a hearse i was trying to honestly i was trying to steal a hearse is what i would so that i could use it for later it's not too late for you to gun it and change the it's scene it's not too you're late. you're in the car for you to gun it uh but, but it just changes have... the the fallout yeah, it'll have trouble. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have trouble getting the body. If but then they, you'll have a hearse. I'll find. I'll find other cars. I'll steal it. is gonna speak up again. Uh, yeah. So, what do you guys want the body for, anyways? <laughs> <laughs> like, she's yeah. gonna say something. Uh, can't you just like uh, tech check his pockets and we can get the fuck out of here? We also need to check his hardware. <laughs> uh, you guys, yeah, that is true. You guys could, uh, that is a valid reason. Yeah, that, that's honestly, like, I, yeah, I thought that was, yeah, we need to check his hardware. And oh, yeah. in case we need time to do that, uh, we need the body. No, that's fair. That's fair. Not that's pull good that man's pants down. I won't point. allow it. <laughs> <laughs> I never said his software. I said his hardware. Uh, yeah, man, his hardware is looking good. <laughs> She'll Missing just a head raise though. her eyebrows at you guys and be like, okay then. Uh, so, you know a tech guy, Levite, if you want to. Uh, you are in contact with Yellow Jacket. I am in contact with Yellow Jacket. I fucking love Yellow Jacket. I miss that guy. I wonder what happened to him. I am also in contact with Armadillo. In theory, yes. 
in theory, if I need Armadillo to show up, he might. He might. He might. It is possible. Um, well, uh, you know, since we're not stealing the hearse, I ain't gonna bother with that right now. Um, uh, but yeah, we just need the body. We're getting the body. Uh, we're gonna let these guys drive off with the hearse. We're gonna load the body into that big, big truck. And, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do our business. Great. So we have the evidence. We have the body. Everything's signed off and we have no problems. And, uh, it looks like Brecht picked up some rope and some broken things, broken boxes and some chains. Yeah. You're weird, bad, He has his box of inspiration. Yeah. Gonna make some good stuff, man. There you go. Uh, but yeah, you guys load up into this truck now. Uh, and now, where are you going? I don't know where you guys are going. All right. No, we need to figure out, exactly like Levite said, we need to figure out who he is, uh, and we need to figure out uh, if he has any hardware on him, any chips or anything that we need to, any information he has. Yeah, you guys... Uh, so right now is a good time to remind people of certain things. Uh, you guys have luck points. Don't forget to use your luck points. You have to use them before you roll. Uh, everyone in the chat, you can either boon or doom our players using channel points. Uh, simply spend the points and say who you're dooming or booning, and then that'll give them advantage or disadvantage uh, on these rolls. Uh, other things to be aware of. Uh, as players, you guys are allowed to say, like, I know a guy, or like... You know, you have contacts, you have life, you know people. Uh, I believe Three and a Thirds has used uh, the corporation a few times already. Uh, Brecht has used his fandom. And then Gary called Le Levite, so that was... He summoned a player, that was cool. Uh, but yeah, Literally and then... Yeah, summoned a player. Yeah. Uh, just, just a weird NPC. <laughs> 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 I am honestly not playable. I have tried, I don't play. I'm, non I'm a non-playable character. Uh, I think that all of us are non-playable characters. Uh, we could talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Uh. So they all they all go off. Um. It's those cops that are milling about. Um. Are they milling about? Uh. Enough to where we'll have to distract them from when we load up a body. No, you're allowed <laughs> to have the body. You have it legally. Oh, sweet. Cool. All right, it's uh, ours. We're gonna load it up in that truck. We're gonna hop the in the truck. In this setting, is a joke, and uh, three and a thirds answers to a corporation, which is the higher authority uh, than the Night City Police Department, which Gary works for. Uh, funny enough, but yeah. So you guys get in the truck. Uh, you guys are driving off. As you're driving off, uh, you guys are stealing a truck from the docks. It's not your truck. Uh, people do call after you and be like, "Hey, they're taking that truck." I want to be in the box part of it with the body. Okay. I'll be in shotgun position. Uh, you can hear you can hear the body bag slosh as he slosh. starts. Slosh yeah, as he starts to drive. Ooh. Um, we're stealing a truck. Apparently, um. I would love, again, to do the same thing that we were planning on doing with the hearse and uh, making this truck disappear off of their tech. Um, Montana? Because uh, if I were to say on a scale of one to eight what my skill with tech would be, it's at a right around a three. Mm. Let me take a look at it and see if I can pull out any hardware. <laughs> Everything looks all right to me. I, I get down, I look under the hood while we're driving, under like the dash while we're driving, pull off a chunk of plastic and move some wires aside. Uh, I rolled a 10, so I'm thinking everything looks fine. Yeah, everything looks fine to you. Yeah, then I pop it back on. All right, we're good to go. No trackers in this one. <laughs> yeah, but they do own, they do own this tech which means that I imagine there's, again, this is, I'm talking now software literally and not hardware. Um, they might be able to track it, uh, but you are currently uh, there. There are some guys outside the truck being like, "Hey, get out of there!" Floor it, flooring it. Floor it. Okay, yeah. so you, you in fact drive. I'm just making sure that because you were about to get pulled out of the truck, and then we're gonna start <laughs> all over. Uh, but yeah, you guys gun it. Um, who's in the cab? It's only room for two. It's Levite and one of you. Montana was. Yeah, I'm in shotgun. Okay, everybody else is in the back, including Jamila. 
Uh, so you guys take off. Where are you heading there, Levite? Anyone um, in particular? Oh, dip. I forgot. I for- totally forgot about my Moto 4. Um, whenever I was, uh, whenever I was rolling last time, um, give me this miscellaneous boost. Hell yes. Um, where am I driving off to? I'm driving wherever Montana tells me to drive to, because honestly, I have no clue where the hell I'm going. Yeah, what's your All right, well, here? While they dig up information in the back and see if they can find anything else about this guy or any new hot leads, his name or apartment or anything, uh, I'm going to direct us towards Maelstrom, uh, towards the industrial zone where they're set up. Okay. Um, can we, I want to shoot a text message to Montana, who's riding shotgun, and tell him to tell Levite to keep it slow so that we can, or at least steady, so we can examine the body in the back. Ooh, in that case, I will direct him to Pangy Burger, because I have a hankering. God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Time to get another food object signed by Brecht himself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you, so you get, you'll drive the Pangy Burger just uh, for a place to go, a destination. Uh, you guys get there. Uh, in the meantime, what are you doing with the body back there, uh, three and thirds? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> no. uh, I would like to inspect it. I think before you said already that it didn't have any, or Jamila said that it didn't have any like gang markings. Is that correct? Yeah, he doesn't have any uh, obvious affiliations. Okay. So, um, and is Maelstrom's not a gang though, right? Maelstrom is, Maelstrom- is a gang. Oh, it is a gang. Okay, my bad. Then uh, we, I want to check his tech. We want to check his tech. Like his uh, his cyberware? Um, I want to start with his agent, but yeah, possibly if Brecht wants to check the cyberware. Okay, yeah, so, I can do that. Uh, I'm going to say you search him. Uh, you search him, you find a uh, a little bit of money, uh, like physical currency. You find a little bit of drugs, but not the kind that you're looking for. Uh, apparently he wasn't using that stuff. Uh, you find his agent locked, and you find some keys. <clears throat> can we attempt to unlock the agent? You can. Around? Give me a uh, tech check. Uh, basic tech? Yeah, basic tech is accepted. So, uh, you do some sort of trick with, like, the SIM card. You, like, jiggle it while you pound nine a bunch. And it just... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how tech works. Uh, but that, <laughs> yeah, no shit. That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you do a reset on it, uh, and you, like, open it in safe mode. And, yeah, you have access with a 27. It was really easy. Awesome. Uh, yeah, here you go, three and a third. I want to... Just dig through it. Uh, yeah, so you can dig through. Uh, there's a lot of like social media stuff, all that kind of surface level, you know, tweets and twitters and Facebook and you know, uh, he's on some dating sites. Uh, you see, he doesn't have a lot of luck. Uh, you check his bank account. He's uh, he's a poor guy. Uh, you could tell he's probably doing this kind of extracurricular because he's broke. Uh, he seems like he probably gambles. And yeah, he just lives a genuinely shitty life. Uh, yeah, but you do have access to his bank information. Uh, you find out where his apartment is. Perfect. And anything else you really want to know specifically, just let me know. Um, I want to look at his like last known contacts and like sorry calls and texts uh absolutely you see that uh he has a lot of very very regular uh at specific times no name uh blocked numbers contacting him uh no text messages uh you don't know if he deleted them or what um but it does seem his phone, uh, Brecht can tell when he was looking at it, has some sort of security software on it that's fairly sophisticated. Um, I want to go ahead and shoot the address of his apartment off to Levite and Montana's agents. 
Um, and mention no, nothing. That's it. I'm just gonna do that for now. Absolutely. Oh, oh, I take note of the phone number. Sorry. We'll say at this point, Montana's walking out of Peggy Burger with a combo meal uh, and some burgers. I throw both you guys in the back, some bags too, and one for Jamila. There you go. I've always wanted to eat with a dead guy. Thanks. <laughs> Want to ride up front? Yeah, there's yeah, a body great. in there. Uh, Jamila eats it. Uh, I don't think three and a thirds cares. <laughs> makes no difference food it is does food seem is to food. bother brecht which i approve of that's good um brecht i promise you this is not the first time the three and a third is eaten in a room with a dead body or me if you want to ride in the front you're welcome to thank you i will take the front <laughs> with, with that uh so you got a really high score you got a crit with that tech score i'm gonna say uh while three and a thirds takes is eating his hamburger a little bit you take the agent uh, you are able to pull up his, like, uh, geocache information to see if he's going oh, nice. anywhere interesting. Uh, and he is going to a weird place. Hmm. What kind of a weird place? Uh, it's just, it. it's weird because, like, you see him going, he goes to the corner store, he goes to a bar, he goes home, mm. he goes to the dock. Those are, like, his places, but... Every uh, couple weeks, he goes to uh, this area near uh, the other side of the water, near the uh, ocean front itself. Interesting. Uh, and it is, if you look it up, a uh, seem it's a warehouse. Cool. I, I'm going to uh, relay that information um via text message to the crew yeah i was good i was gonna make you guys uh have to like get help with that but with a 27 uh that's an incredible difficulty the only thing higher if you'd got two more points it would have been legendary uh, and at that point you probably could have like resurrected him or something i don't know he could have just swallowed the phone and subitized all of the information yeah mm -hmm. is that what that's called subitizing yeah, it's like when you uh, roll a four on a six-sided dice, you don't have to count the dots to know that it's four. You just know that it's four. It's a subitization of the information instead like of having new to... world. Word. I like it. I'm learning something new. Yeah, Someone man. in the chat Every gave you guys a safety net. Uh, By the way, yeah. as soon as we are done with this body, I would love to ditch this truck so we're not in stolen, uh, stolen merchandise and um, we can transfer over to my, my car. Uh, we can people, ditch the truck. Oh, sorry. The two people that would be aware of what you're supposed to do with the body are three and a third since you signed the paper and the police officer Montana. You are supposed to turn it back into the meat locker when you're done with it. You don't have to, uh, but that'll have like its own consequences, blah, blah, blah. Well, you don't have to. <laughs> we'll send it over to the meat locker. I suppose. I guess we can drive the truck to the meat locker, and then are we just returning the truck? Are we just are we just being good? No, guys? I think <laughs> we can. It was a truck that was from the docks, so yeah. I'm thinking we can stash it at the dock worker's apartment because now we know where he lives, and then jump into your ride from there and head across the water. Yeah, I think that. Let's do that. Certainly a strange trail we're leaving, but it shouldn't get us caught up. Oh, and honestly, like. Uh, I mean, I feel like we should. I feel like we should, so that we're not on the trail regarding the body. Uh, we should get the body to the uh, to the morgue. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say that you guys make it to the morgue. It's not a problem. I just need to know whether or not you did it. Uh, you guys get there. It doesn't look like a respectful mortuary of any kind. It just looks kind of like very matter of fact. Like throw the meat in there. Uh, there's even a joke sticker on one of the walls that says uh, Joe's exotic meats. You know, uh, that's gross. <laughs> you could tell it's a joke, but yeah, it is gross. Um, it's a very tasteless place. But, you uh, can tell it's a joke because there's a guy eating a raw hamburger right next to it, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Uh, but yeah, so you guys go there. Danny DeVito's behind the counter with his feet up, eating his TV dinner, watching somehow 
a like box TV, even though you guys are in the future. Uh, he must really know his shit. Yeah, man, where did you find that relic? Antiques, baby. That looks good. <laughs> uh, he'd be like, oh, hey, look who it is. And he'll he'll take the body back. Uh, he'll be like, Jimmy! Jimmy! And Jimmy will come running up and be like, get it out of here! Hey, we have like, some, uh, can you say that again? Can you say that one more time? What get it say? out of here! <laughs> we um, have a bag full of cold fries if you'd like it. And I put it. I put the cold, the bag full of cold fries on the table for this guy. You offer me some cold fries, forget about it, because that's what they say and talk like. Uh, and then he's gonna take the bag. That's what. That's what I thought. <laughs> uh, he's probably interested in the paperwork as well, Montana. Oh, I left the paperwork in the truck. That's a weird. Shit. That's... <laughs> Why? <laughs> I didn't mean to. He's forgetful. It happens. What? I'll go grab the paperwork. Okay. Go I'm glad the paperwork this is from the truck. It is important. But that's funny, though. That's funny. That throws me, but that's very funny. Uh, yeah, uh, Levite will come back in with the paperwork. He'll stamp it. He'll give you your yellow sheet. Uh, thanks. You mind faxing this to the precinct for me? I'm going to get this. I'm going to lose this. He will. He left the paperwork in the truck. Uh, he'll be like, he'll be like, yeah, I'll file that right away for you. And he'll like throw the clipboard <laughs> like somewhere on the desk. It'll knock over a stack of papers. Perfect. And he'll be like, Jimmy, told you to clean <laughs> up this mess. Jimmy, file this when you're done cleaning that up. Jimmy will, will be halfway up the stairs, responding to the uh, with blood on his hands, responding to the thing, and then he'll be like, <laughs> "Fax machine." We'll tell him to get back down there and deal with the body first. He'll go the other way. Of course, they're still using fax machines. This, this guy is, is still th using this a is, fax machine. This is like 2020 in the alternate future. <laughs> fax machines are the way of the future. You just don't know yet. Mm -hmm. They're coming back, baby. Yeah, they still they're use like, them. It's just now you can like fax like people and kisses and stuff you know yeah man it's like disco fax isn't dead <laughs> uh but yeah so you guys park this at the apartment address uh and now you guys are free to do what you will leave like you do have access to your own car as well yeah i know okay just making sure you why did we it. why do we steal the truck if you had access to your own car not because i wanted to steal a truck i mean come on Give me a break. And also, you could also way well. cleaner to keep our car clean and use stolen vehicles when necessary. Leave less dead bodies. Exactly what Third was saying. Look, I don't mind if we get dead body juice in the back of your car. It's not my car. And I don't mind if I get dead body juice in your mouth, Montana, because it is not my mouth, Montana. <laughs> so you keep your dead body juice in your mouth. Can we move this along, guys? We're trying to. Yeah. Uh... We're ditching the truck at the at the warehouse worker's house so that they they find it after it's gone missing for them and they stop looking for it and they stop Jimmy looking for like, us. That's 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 good. Go. That's good. Let's just. Uh, Jamila seems annoyed. Well, Levite has that effect on people. It, it ain't Friday, Montana. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Fridays are funny. Uh, <coughs> That, that, by the way, that's going to be my new thing. Anytime I'm out on a Friday, it's my goal to play the heel. I will always <laughs> play the heel on Fridays. It'll be heel Fridays for Layton. I like that. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Uh, you just also play one on Wednesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you guys head to this address. I'm correct in assuming, right? You guys do anything beforehand? Any preparations you take? Anything you need to get? Uh, you guys have been injured, for instance. You guys have uh, your armor is damaged. Yeah, so whenever we, uh, whenever we go to his apartment to drop off the truck, uh, I'll go inside since I'm pretty sure no one's going to be there. Actually, we have the keys, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll, all right, I'll let us in. My intention is to clean up. Hopefully, there's no one in here. Uh, yeah, you go in. He lives alone. Uh, it's very sad. He has a waifu pillow. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, people in the chat. 
Yeah, that's right. That's right. Don't uh, don't sequester our audience. Literally, one hundred percent of our viewers have waifu pillows. It's just, yeah. From an outside perspective, it can be kind of sad. But hey, to each their own. Um. So I will. Yeah. What you were saying. I'm gonna come in here and go to the bathroom, clean up my wounds, take a moment to catch my breath on the couch, and maybe see if he's got a beer or two in the fridge. He does. Uh, he's a, he's a full blown uh, fucking weeb. He has like Japanese beard and stuff. Oh shit, Ichiban, Yingling. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I thought it was funny. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading. Anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, so you got you do that. You guys are rest. You're resting up. Is that what I'm assuming here? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a question. Yeah. How can I get a hold of more grenades? You can go buy them. Uh, so you can go to gun stores, but there are also literally vending machines. Nice. Yeah. There are literally vending machines. You can buy almost anything in a vending machine. That's I'm awesome. a little low on cash. I, mean, I don't have much cash right now. Sorry, creds. My book's being fucking stupid. <laughs> Euro dollars. They call them eddies. Can I not use the corporate account card to buy him some boom boom bang bang material? Uh, you do. I mean, you have something like that, I think, but I don't think it's like infinite. I think it. You know, I haven't gone by the precinct in a couple of days. I should be able to swing by there and let you into the armory. That would be a mission unto itself. That'd be like a little yeah. mini heist. Yeah, stealing resources from uh, from the cops doesn't seem like a goal. Mean, yeah, can, it ain't stealing resources; those belong to the taxpayers. Well, uh, but yeah, for just for sake of argument, there is a vending machine nearby where you could buy ammo and that kind of stuff. Cool. It's sandwiched well, like, they between, belong to the tax. It's sandwiched between a snack food vending machine and a underwear vending machine. Nice. All those, three things that I need. It's one of those groups. <laughs> gross underwear ones. <laughs> no, as opposed to the uh the what the nice underwear, the yeah, not gross case you get a fresh pair of undies. Yeah, there's new the fresh versus used Levi. Yeah. And there's <laughs> the there, and they actually have men. a table that you can roll on for uh what kinds of vending machines are around. Uh but I couldn't open my book just now to look at it. So you know what the I best part is? Is you can actually you can go to the uh, the clean underwear for women vending machine and you can get a fresh pair of underwear and then you can put it on and then take it off and then put it in the used underwear for men to buy. They, they do not do background checks on that. So yeah, you could do that. Uh, right here, you, Beth, you, you, you don't have any money for grenades, there, buddy. I don't think so, no. Well, you're out of grenades, then, sir. Uh, but yeah, so you guys will then head on to this new location. To the warehouse. To the warehouse. So who's are we at with all the waifu stuff? Uh, the, the guy, the, the guy. dead guy. Oh, the dead guy. Yeah, the dead guy. The yeah, where we're, we're going to, whose gang territory is that in? It is uh, not in gang territory. It is just in a uh, waterfront side of town. Uh, it's not a combat zone. It is just kind of like it's an unused, older part of town. So there's no, like, corpo influence like there was at the pr previous docks? No. Gotcha. As far as, uh, like, officially, no one no one uses that area for anything. It's kind of abandoned right now. Mm, cool. Uh, the city is under constant, like, uh, construction and all that stuff. But, yes, so... You guys go there. Oh, yeah. I got my book open. Hooray! How hurt are you guys? Not. I'm not. Uh, just a smidge. Just a smidge? Yeah, I was at 36 out of 45. That's not too bad. Mm -mm. You think resting and uh, resting up would probably solve that? Uh, I'm going to have to check. 
Uh, you know, for sake for sake of ease, uh, it has been a long time. You guys have kind of not done anything too crazy for a while. I'll yeah, say, the last I'll say the last firefight we got into was outside of like was it Slim's? Is that his name? Quicks. Uh, but yeah, Quicks. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a while since you guys have actually taken damage. Uh, but so what I'm gonna say I'm gonna say you guys are at full health. Uh, you guys have rested. You guys have eaten like three times uh, and had some drinks. And it is a new day. You guys actually stayed like awake. Uh, I'm not going to have that do mechanical effects this time. Because uh, it was for the sake of the story. But your armor maintains whatever damage it has taken. But yeah, so uh, Levi, you drive everybody to this warehouse. Yeah, I sure do. Um... Hey, uh, hey, hey, Jahan, yeah. uh, since we're about to get to the warehouse, uh, I know it's a little bit early for our break. You, you doing your little pee pee dance this. there? I am doing a little. I'm sitting on a yoga ball. Just, like, <laughs> See, up I and also down. It is have the... to be pretty bad. Uh, so what time is it so we have the right visualization as we go on break? What, what does this warehouse look like as we're Yeah, I'm re- uh, let me go ahead and set up the scene before we go pee pee. Uh, but yeah, so you guys pull up. It's uh, It looks a little uh, nicer. It, it looks like an old prison kind of it's not but it has that same kind of stone work uh and from the ground level you can tell that it has like a big old skylight on top and you do see people patrolling uh it the the sun is actually starting to go back down a little bit uh it's like it's the magic hour uh sunset as you guys it's a very large facility it's on the waterfront uh it looks like it is used as a warehouse or was uh, but you do see activity, which you weren't necessarily expecting on the outside. Uh, and as you guys pull up, we're going to go ahead and take our five-minute break, everybody. Because I also have to pee. Uh, but yeah, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Uh, we got a lot of interesting stuff that we'll go over uh, coming up in our streams in the future uh, that we'll go over soon. Uh, stay tuned and we'll see you guys in five minutes. Hey everybody, welcome back to Fresh Out the Box Play Cyberpunk Red. I am still your game master, Jahan and I'm. I'm Casualty CDG, but you can call me Gary. And tonight, as usual on Cyberpunk Red, I'll be playing the part of Montana Jack Calloway, a lawman who got himself caught up in some kind of scheme with dirty drugs in Night City. Things in the park ain't never be the same unless we get this sorted out. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm Leighton. Uh, I'm playing Levite. I'm the getaway guy. I'm the getaway guy. Got small hands. Got a guy. They go around the wheel, and I'm I'm the getaway guy. I'm Kevin. I am playing three and a third, which is the Pythagorean numerology for the number five, because I was the fifth orphan in a foster home uh, after my parents were murdered, and the case was never solved. So I'm just one big old emotionless machine douche and uh, caught up in this this night city scandal with uh, these three other guys that do not smell like lavender going off a little bit and i'm matt i am a plan brecht and uh, he is an artist who's going to be picking up some trash probably from whatever mess we're about to get ourselves into to make some art so. it's a fun chain of evidence uh but yeah if you've noticed, I have I put a link in the uh, chat uh, for Wawawa. Uh It is a women's charity for uh, to provide therapy and that kind of assistance to uh, survivors of sexual assault. We're doing a charity stream this Friday uh, at eight central. Uh, don't don't forget to tune in for that. It's going to be fun. We're going to play City of Mist with its creator. Uh, Amit Musif and uh, Kelly from the charity will also be there. Uh, me, Gary, and uh, Tony Plus One will all be there. Uh, I'm working on getting the donate button here work uh, going. Uh, if you go to our Facebook, there's a link on our Facebook page to donate now. Uh, but we'll also be doing so live. Uh, we but- say we're going to be playing Friday, but uh, if you're listening to this in the future, we'll be playing... Uh, March 26th, Friday, March 26th at 7 p.m. Central until 10 p.m. Central. That way the West Coast people and the East Coast people can all play with us. Uh, I think Tony's out of, like, Pennsylvania and Kelly's out of Vancouver. 
So uh, it's a real big event, making every, getting everybody to come together. It should be a, a blast. Oh, and I meet Moshe. I meet is in uh, he's in New York. Absolutely. So I know everyone's on different times. Oh, hey, thanks for the raid. Uh, we have eleven raiders here from. Hey, raiders. Uh, welcome raiders. You guys are just in time for us to enter this uh, facility and hopefully uh, figure out more to this mystery. Uh, bullets are going to start flying soon here. So everybody, you guys are outside this facility, this uh, warehouse that looks more like a fortress uh, at this point. To, uh, yeah, thank you so much, lords and ladies of fate. Really appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, so you're, you're trying to, uh, how do you want to approach this? Uh, well, you see uh, guards, you see uh, fortifications. Um, first things first, I want to take a picture of it on my agent and send it up to Liz. Absolutely. Um, and then kind of take note of the skylight and wonder if maybe we should split and a couple of us should try to go in from the roof. I can be stealth. I definitely have an itchy, um, grapple hand. So there we go. And we have Jamila, who's an assassin, so maybe... Maybe the three of you guys hit the roof and Montana and I try to find another way or we can split up somehow or maybe we don't split up. What do you guys think? <clears throat> Stealth isn't my strong suit, so you let me know where you want me to go and I'll be there. Uh, the roof um, like a good access point for sure. Yeah, I also have... I, if we can all get to the roof, it'd be a pretty good access point. I also have a grapple gun. Um, I also I have, a have a grapple gun. I do not have a grapple gun, but I do have a rope and I'm... I'm pretty skinny, so, you know, y'all can touch me in places and drag me up. I'll touch you in places and drag you up. <laughs> uh, yeah, Let's so everyone does on. have grapple guns, which is funny. Uh, but, yeah, so the sun's going down. How would you like to get onto this rooftop? It's a, it's a big rectangular building. Uh, it's It looks kind of like the, all the top part isn't a... Um, Oh, hey, thanks for gifting the sub. That's really cool. Uh, but yeah, the, yeah, top, the top part's just empty. Cool. It's not like a floor. You know, it's like a factory. It looks like an old factory. Uh, can, uh, from the vantage point we're at currently, can I see any uh, security issues on the roof? Uh, there yeah. is a guard on the roof. Uh, he's just kind of sitting there with his rifle on his arms. Just kind of like looking around, just chilling. Uh, and then there's two patrolling guards on the ground floor. Are there any storage containers that looks like we could climb up and get onto the warehouse a little bit easier? Uh, mm -hmm. So well, as you're looking for ways to get up, you do see there's a fire escape um, still functioning. And there are some storage containers in the back. They look defunct and unused and old and overgrown. Take it. Um... Uh, speaking to the speaking to the crew, um, if a couple of us could stealth up there and take out that top guard, it would be easier for uh, for the rest of us to get up there that aren't stealthy. She, um, uh, Jamila will unsling her uh, her rifle from her back. She'll be like, "I'm on it." God, you're so cool. <laughs> she'll tuck her hair into her mask and she'll put it back on. Uh, the uh, guards that we can see, how heavily armed are they? They are. That's a good question. They have assault rifles, and they're wearing body armor. So, but they don't look like gang members, and it's no. Safe they to look say. like they look like uh, security guards. Good. Not the way that me and you think of security guards. In the way that you know, corporations—they're hired corporate goons. They look like. Yeah, like mercenaries almost. Yeah, they look like mercs. They look like <laughs> they mercs. Dig. Interesting. Um, well, uh, Jamila, yeah, if you can take out that guard. She's gone. Swiftly. Can, I, can I make a phone call to Liz and ask her if it's our people? Uh, yeah, if, if you want to make sure that it's not, uh, that you're not about to attack one of your company's own facilities by mistake, uh, she, uh, as you go to call her, you'll look at the, uh, she responded to your picture earlier, and she'll be like, huh. But she, uh, so she knows that it's the building. She doesn't say anything about it. So you could probably assume she probably would have stopped you. 
Gotcha. Okay, so we don't need to do that. Then <clears throat> it looks like maybe another corporation's making you guys look bad. It wouldn't be the first time, and unfortunately, it won't be the last. I would figure we'd learn after all this Arasaka Militech bullshit we've been through. They already blew up half the damn city. What else do they want from us? Humans never learn. Well, why be a man when you can be a success, am I right? I look at three and a third. Hmm. Well said, Brecht. Well said. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'd kind of rather be a human. I'd kind of rather, like, you know... The life. guard rotation continues around the building. Uh, but you guys do see your opening. I dash out before them and, and like, high knees, stealth run, try to, try to get across the courtyard. Anyone, I have seen you do that exact <laughs> run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone who looks up uh, notices that that guard's gone. So we need to we need to move that body. The guard on the uh, roof. Mm. Um, it looks like it looks like Jamila did her job. We move and we move fast. That's what's going on. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so you guys are the, the outside guards are not too intensive because they are still trying to kind of keep the facade of a. Uh, abandoned building, but you guys are able to get around back to the fire escape. Great. If this is um, a corporate job, the place is likely to be bugged, and there could be some high-tech security in place. We should try to get a check up on it before we head in. Uh, I'm no expert on that. Are you three and a third? I have no tech for it. I have a bug detector I can use. All right. Well, uh, you, you can try to find an access point near you and check the security. Uh, let's get to the roof of I think before we do that. Um, uh, at that the way bottom we're... of the fire escape, there is a access point. Never mind. <laughs> cool. Uh, so you're gonna give me a uh, another tech check. Uh, don't forget. Oh well, that's not bad. Uh, I have my difficulty chart right here. That's good. Uh, so yeah, you hit that difficult level. Uh, it's not. It's not Fort Knox. It's not not Fort Knox. It's uh, it has a pretty good level of security, but you are able to uh, bypass it, um, and you see that they do. This building looks abandoned, but its security system is very much so alive. Hmm. <clears throat> Can I shut the security system off? Potentially. Is there a back bay door, like a lifting garage door that a vehicle could come out of? Out of? Uh, there <laughs> is on the far side, like the dead opposite side that you're on. I'm, I'm worried that when bullets start firing, they may flee with the vehicle out of here, and I think one of us should stay on that door. We should try to make some sort of improvised explosive device or some sort of contraption to ensnare the vehicle. Something to puncture the wheels at least. One person may not be enough to defend against it if they're getting away. But yeah, booby trapping would be a great idea. Uh, so yeah, you are able to uh, see that they do have uh, cameras that you can access from this access point. Mm. Uh, cool. Since you're not a net runner, you can't really uh, you can't do like the tricks where you know they think they're still working, but you can disable. Cool. I would like to do that. I would like to disable them. Okay. Uh, oh. You're going to need to give me another check, and don't forget about your luck points. Cool. Uh, I would like to use three luck points. Okay. Yeah. And remind me, Jahan, can we give him luck points or no? No. Luck Copy points that. are self-contained to the person. <clears throat> but, so, with that three, you hit another 16, since you roll a 13 plus your three luck points. Um, and that is enough to, you just need to hit that difficult level again and you find because you found the circuit and now you just you snip it and now you uh you tell everybody you're good you're good to go uh, you see some then of the cameras gotta, turn off and uh, we gotta go fast we gotta go fast you fast go fast you guys, what are we gonna do about this door that montana noticed um as soon as we get inside i'll get to the door and try to disable it uh, so you yep. guys, are, uh, first off, you guys are on the roof now, officially. Yep. And you can see down okay. through the skylight. Is there a vehicle inside poised, ready to go out that door if shit goes south? Uh, there is. I knew it! 
I moved. fucking knew it. it I'm gonna, is. when we get in there, I'm gonna go for that door and disable it. Well, but should we put some sort of precaution in place outside of the door before we get there, just in case shit really goes? Because if it's high value, they're gonna scoot quick. I might I, uh, head down. I might I, head down to the car. I might. I might. I might actually run back downstairs, double back, um, follow the uh, follow the ground security guards wherever they go in. Um, that way, I'm close to the car in case they go. Yeah, I might join in that pursuit just so we're not soloing here. Uh, yeah. So you guys, you guys can see all of it from the very top. Uh, and you guys can do what you want about that. As you're looking around, you notice somebody's up here with you. Uh, I draw my gun and point. Is it our friend? Yeah, you point it right at Jamila, and she just kind of <laughs> she looks at you, and she'd be like, "We clear." He's jumping. Yeah, you may want to keep an eye on them from up here. Uh, I think we're I think we're going in, and it's going to get loud. Gotcha. Jamila, and she'll just uh, pull up and get ready. Please don't kill the last eyewitness this time. She'll kind of, uh, you can tell by the way she moves her head behind her mask, she rolls her eyes at you. Did, uh, did, uh, did you see any access points from up here that, uh, y'all can make your way inside? Um, yeah, are there AC vents or is there like so, an open yeah. glass so your, your door points, on a rail? Your points of entry are on the ground level, there's several doors all over the place. There's windows, uh, going all the way down the side of the wall, too. If you guys wanted to, like, repel through one. There is the skylight, which is very large, a uh, very very large glass skylight, uh, and then there is a access door on the roof that uh, it's like a trap door that you could tell probably has a built-in ladder underneath it, uh, and you can see down now that you're looking down there, there are a bunch of uh, guards on the catwalk. You can see three up top, and you can't tell how many are below. Uh, one of them is leaned up against the car. So there's a lot of, a lot of folks here. There's there there are quite a few people here. Uh, so I'm wondering, should we split then, or should we try to stick it out in a group? Because if they get hammered on the top floor and we're down by the car, then at least we, you're flanking. True. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna stick with it then. I'm gonna I'm gonna tag Levite and go where where he goes if we head back to the vehicle. So you guys are gonna enter from the ground floor. Uh yeah, so we got we got Team One of Montana, um, Brecht and Jamila, uh, moving in from the top as the first point. Uh, we're gonna follow the security guards in on the ground. We're gonna follow them in whatever entrance they go through, so we can get them from behind. A um, uh, little flanking, little flanking, multi side action. Plus that puts uh, puts me in me in third, closer to the car in case. We need to run out and grab it. <laughs> you, go, you go look so over the ledge real quick to see they... where the guards are. Uh, you don't <clears> see them. Um, and then you notice them laying on the ground. Jamila, did you do that too? She looks at someone you else. And she just kind of Someone shoots. else is here. It, 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 no, was, it was Jamila. She it was Jamila. Jamila. <laughs> she She's... killed all the guards outside. She killed yeah. all the... How did we catch you, Jamila? How did that happen? You flipped my... Uh, jet ski. Yeah, we had a really good driver. <laughs> yeah, you, you you out drove her. You did not out fight her. I tackled that however ski do. Yeah, it was a good. <laughs> it was cool. It was a cool scene. Uh, don't forget, you guys can see it on YouTube uh, next week. I actually cool. tackled them off of the tackled ski do. Also, there was a lot of ski do tackling. A lot of ski do tackling going on last game. <laughs> it was like a treja vu of ski do tackling. Treja vu. Yeah, so there is a. Uh, there's like a little. One of those makeshift catwalk offices on the top level, and then there are three patrolling solos going around the top. Uh, and then you see one guy on the bottom leaned up against the car. You don't see anyone else down there, but you can't. You don't have full vision down there. He's leaned up against our car. No, his car. Oh. Inside the warehouse. It's like a van. So we got three solos up top. That's going to be the the worst of it right there for us, Brecht. They can handle everything else on the floor. You see somebody load something into that car. Uh, they're kind of they're wearing that all white, uh, like clean room getup. And it looks like they're getting the ran the and, van getting the product ready for movement. You see the guy and him talking uh, back and forth. And then oh god, he moves towards the car door. Sweet, third and I are heading down. We are yeah, heading we're down. Down. towards the car. Okay, absolutely. You guys are able to get down there to the the, the door entrance on the the far side. Yeah. 
Uh, we need to cut them off because they've got some sort of scary radioactive material. You guys should be safe and careful. Brecht and uh, I'll say Brecht notices. Brecht, you notice uh, the clean room guy walk all the way towards like one of the walls. Uh, then you lose sight of him. Okay. <clears throat> it seems like uh, they got something in that back room over there. That's where they're I don't know, workshop or whatever the heck they're they're holding or making these back there. Yeah, that's where he came out of with the case, and then he headed back towards that wall. Uh, but yeah, so you guys are on the bottom, and the three of you are on top. What do you do next? Jamila is aiming her gun. Hmm. Waiting. All right, Brett. I'm going to go straight down the middle through the glass and drop two smoke grenades. Everyone's going to start firing at me, and you can take or take out all the solos on top. Will do. And I put my uh, mask on. Knowing that there's going to be smoke. Jamila, I need I need you to overwatch anybody that's uh, got a sight on me. I need you to take them down first. She'll she'll like do an almost imperceptible nod at you as she zeroes in, uh, very third, focused. Uh, uh, third and I, I think we're going to make our way around to that uh, to that that big door, the garage door, where we think the the car might come out. That way, if they try to go, we can just shoot up that car. Absolutely. So, everybody, give me initiatives. Bollocks. Oh, all of us? All three of us rolled critical failures? Four? Or is it just red? I think it's just red I because just I rolled a red. six. I rolled a <laughs> yeah. six. I'm going to die. It's just yeah, red. I, I oh, thought we were all hot. critical failures no, right there. Red. Oh. You guys are good. Okay. Uh, uh, so Montana, nine, uh, three and a third is twelve. Sorry, Matthew, twelve. No, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. Oh, gotcha. I'm talking out loud as I write, and then. Wait, so, uh, so hold on. Explain real quick how uh, three and a third equals five. Five. Oh, the Pythagorean numerology. Mm. So there's different types of math. So you've got like geometry and stuff that they teach us in school, which is Euclidean and Pythagorean numerology and geometry. And then you have non-Euclidean and uh, what they call Chaldean numerology. And these numbers, they break down. So in terms of Pythagorean numerology being the number five, uh, it's like a perfect number. So you've got your little triangle business mm -hmm. and your first perfect square would be a three, four and a five. And so five is your first perfect third triangle. So he called it a three because it was a three-sided figure and a third. I appreciate you guys doing but this. But weirdly <laughs> enough, in Chaldean numerology, uh, it means something as well. But in Chaldean, it's actually the number nine instead of the number five. So it does matter that my character is obsessed with Euclidean and Pythagorean um, knowledge or uh, geometry and mathematics as opposed to non Euclidean and Chaldean. Thank you for the distraction, fellas. Uh, Did you I have time? No, I, I am now ready. Yeah, I am now ready. Uh, so, it's going to be Levite first. You act first. Uh, you're ready. You're ready. You're at the garage door. <laughs> Davy Jones also rolled an initiative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang. Davy Jones, he... Oh, we don't have a slash roll for in the chat, unfortunately. We should get one. We should get a roll bot. Uh, oh my yeah. god, we really should. We should. Where's Jamila's D twenty at? Oh, I roll off screen. Oh. Yeah, they don't. She's one of them. That that way that way you guys don't know you can't derive their stats. Uh, uh just for the record, David Jones rolled an eleven. Oh, there you go. You got an eleven, David Jones. All right, so you did better than Montana. <laughs> That's not saying much. All right. Um, I'm adding him to actually, the order. yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to the, I'm gonna get to the driver's side of that door, and I'm gonna ready an action to start firing into the driver's side. Uh, yeah. So you open the door. I want to jump out of the vehicle and be uh, wait with the katana. Yeah. You you uh, so you go into the garage. Uh. Oh, you, into the garage. Yeah, they're inside. Yeah, and I was I was gonna wait for that for for that garage door to open. Oh, you're gonna wait and then open fire. Gotcha. 
Yeah, that way when they try to escape from whatever's coming, we're right there. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. and I want to jump out and be next to the door with my sword to try and slash the tires as it drives by. I will as see opens you guys are the in waiting, then, and we will go to Brecht. Uh, I guess uh, you said you're going to kick stuff off with smoke, right, Montana? Mm-hmm. Okay, you oh, go ahead yeah. and do your smoke now. Uh, I have rope, so I'm going to secure that rope <clears throat> and smash through the top of this roof with two smoke grenades, one in each hand, already activated, bringing a smoke trail down with me. Uh, Give me what that do you need athletics me to roll? check, sir. Gladly. I'm excited. Uh, uh. It's blue, that's all okay. I can so far. 15! It's 15. Right. 15 is not 15, that 15, so I smash through the glass, clink, clink, pull both of my smoke grenades out, and a torrent of smokes and glass shatters down in the middle of this warehouse. I throw both smoke grenades out to my sides, so smoke shoots out to my left and right, and the room starts to fill up as my infrared eyes turn one of, on. One of the, you see one guy, like, flick his cigarette away and, like, try to levy his weapon, uh, but you can see them, uh... I'm going to go ahead and drop you in a proper initiative order now. So you're going to go in a minute. Uh, but Brecht, go ahead. So um, I would like to uh, grapple hand down onto the catwalk area okay. um, with, uh, with mask on. And I also have my, my infrared eyes. <laughs> you guys both have infrared eyes. That's pretty dope. Uh, um. And yeah, I just ready an attack against, uh, or actually, what I want to do is ready to toss someone off the side of. You can just do it. Oh, cool. Yeah, you can just do it. Uh, awesome. You jump down. You grapple hand. The grapple hand wording is that like it works. You you grapple. <laughs> uh, so you jump down uh, like Spider Man. You swing up on the catwalk. You're right in front of somebody. There's a guy flicking his cigarette away. He's like, oh. Like, you're right in his face. What do you do? Uh, I want to toss him off the catwalk. All right, give me that brawl check. Nice. <laughs> yes, sir! Looking good. It it's is opposed. A... Uh, but mm -hmm. good luck to this guy. Uh, <laughs> All right, so with his 21, he, <laughs> he stops no! you. <laughs> He got a crit. Uh, oh, he had to get a crit to stop you. Uh, but yeah, so he like he's like no, like you try to throw him over the side. He just kind of like is like ah, and he freaks out on you, uh, and he points his gun at you. Now it is Gary's turn. Um. So smoke grenades are thrown. Eyes are on. There's the guys over there that they've got the little secret drug room, and then there's the guys over there getting ready to leave with the van. Um, and to my understanding, there's a couple more guards, like three more foot soldiers throughout this room. Uh, there are three on the catwalk, and then there's the two guys up below. Just two. Okay, so, perfect. So, I will run through the smoke to the closest guy I see, and grab him from behind, like in a sleeper hold, uh, with an, full intention to choke him out before they can figure out where I am. Absolutely. Ooh, someone doomed a bad boy. That's funny. Uh, so, mm. go ahead and, yeah, give me a brawl check. That's how you grapple. So you're going to grapple with brawl. Uh, okay. And then you can choke. Uh, choking actually has a whole thing. My brawl check is a 19. Brawl check is a 19. He's going to try to not let you choke him to death. If... If you uh, if you want to give him some modifiers, that's up to you because you're the game master. But he is in smoke, and I'm running through it. And, and he's doomed, uh, mm. which is why he uh, he doesn't even see you coming. You grab him from behind. Perfect. Uh, and then what? Now you have him. You are you are considered grappled. Both of you are grappled with each other. Uh, you can move him around freely, and you can use your action to choke him. And it does yes. your uh, it does your body damage. I'm going to do that, use my action to choke him, and it does seven damage. Seven. Ah. Oh. Oh. 
Uh, so with this noise, the driver looks up and is like, oh shit, and he jumps in the car and he drives through the fucking garage door. It opens up. He comes on by. Go ahead, Levite. So, uh, yeah, I this open car fire. car comes right at you. Yeah, I open fire right into that driver's seat. Absolutely. Um, Give me that uh, attack. I got, I got, uh, come here, you, can I, can I <coughs> click you? Can I just do that? That's a garbage roll. Ooh. Hold on. How was that? Oh, I rolled a one. That's how I, that's how that. <laughs> you critically failed. So, uh, the garage door kind of, you're a little too close to it and your gun like gets pulled up by the garage door and you just let one go. You're like, ah, I do, fuck. I do, I do have two attacks with this one. Yeah, you have um, a heavy pistol. Uh, rate of fire two, which means you do get to shoot again. Yep, and that one's a 20. That is much better. And the way it works is unless they are quick enough to dodge what this guy is not while sitting in a driver's seat, uh, it just uses that DV value uh, according to distance. So you hit. It goes right into that guy. Give me that damage. Give me that sweet damage. Uh, can I just click 3d6? Nope. I gotta, I gotta actually do this, I believe. <laughs> garbage. Fucking garbage. No way. <laughs> How much what did you throw a rock at him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, you see him take one in the vest. Uh, but nothing else happens there. So now, three and a thirds. Uh, as soon as that door opens, I want to swing my katana and aim for those. I mean, it's a van. We know this is front-wheel drive, for Christ's sake. I'm going to swing my katana, bam, out, and then hold it rigid to try and slash both tires as it's coming out. Absolutely. Give me... I don't feel like that's an attack. I feel like that's, like, athletics or something. Don't forget to use your luck points if you want to. Yeah, don't forget to use your luck points. I'll, I'll allow you to... You're a katana user. I'll let you use your katana. Go ahead and just give me that regular attack, and uh, let me know if you're using any luck. I would like to use three of my uh, six luck points, three yes. Three luck points in the hole here. Let's see if it pays uh, off. I really want to see this guy shoot through the windshield and then scorpion <laughs> he dies. But, you know, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, so, attack, here we go. Don't forget, anybody at home, you can spend channel points to boon or doom us. At any and point we, in time, you can give us advantage or disadvantage. Uh, please spend your points there free. So that's Watch it play along. That we is, got to amputate a leg earlier. That was great. Yeah, they did help you amputate a leg. So that's going to be plus three for the luck, uh, which you hit that everyday value. You do not hit the difficult threshold yes. of both tires. Oh, no. Three and a thirds got booned. And yes. Jahan, the dungeon Jahan master. I have been doomed. Uh, so, yeah, I'm doomed now. Uh, you got booned right as the results were happening. I will allow it because it is exactly the amount that you need to hit both tires. So thank yes, you, Vampire thank you, Bites. Yeah. This next scene is for you. Uh, so you you stiff arm it and you just <laughs> and you keep it steady uh, and you don't break your sword either. Uh, that's important. But both tires on that side pop, and it kind of... And the, the truck falls over on its side as it comes out the door. Because uh, he, pe he peeled out. He's like... Uh, it's not a devastating crash, but it is that, that truck is over. <laughs> you stopped it with a sword, which is cool. Uh, thank you, chat. Thank you so much. Uh, but yeah. Now. It is bricked. You can go again. Oh, right. Don't forget, you're the guy that goes after I got doomed. So keep that in mind as you choose your action. Mm. <laughs> oh, can I try to toss that guy off the catwalks again? Yes, absolutely. Cool. I would like to do that. He does. He hasn't recovered yet from the shock. Uh, the first thing was adrenaline, yeah. but let's see how this goes. All right. Just the two of them tugging back and forth. Someone's going over the rail. Yeah, so with the uh, effects of the Doom, uh, he, like, trips. And, like, you can feel you have his weight. You have control all of a sudden. Would you like to, to hip toss him over the edge? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and give me that athletics check to make sure that that hip toss is... This is not contested. 
Throw thank that you, thing. <clears throat> thank you, Captain Grimly, for the doom. Yes, Captain Grimly. That's what I'm talking thank about. You. Very grim. Athletics 14. That is enough to throw somebody over railing that's already in the midst of falling. So you you put your hip into it, just right over the edge. Ah! Ah! So he, he crumples on this uh, supply container. He hits like the sharp edge, oh, and you hear something no. break. Oh, it's like a thung and a snap. Thung. Uh, <laughs> you are wrestling with somebody over there, Gary. Uh, I am. Well, Montana Jack Calloway is yeah, wrestling Montana, with somebody. Sorry. <laughs> you can't see what I'm doing under this desk, and it's none of your fucking business if I'm wrestling, <laughs> as long as I can handle my stream shit appropriately. Hey, there you go. There you go. You're right. Hey, handle right. your stream however you want to handle, handle your that. Stream stream. However you want yeah, to man, I have a stream. second. I have a second career in uh, necklace, like no no head Greco wrestling. I'm really good at it. There you go. Uh, I practice the whole time. As you're grappling this guy, uh, the dude behind you, the third guy, levies his gun at you. Uh, Can he then, see me through the smoke? He gets ah, fucking tagged. He's dead. Yeah, you see Chumila shoot him. Uh, he's not dead dead, but he is very hurt. Um, and then, go ahead and give me that choke check. Uh, you choke need check. athletics and it's I'll just a give brawl. you... You need brawl, and I'll give you brawl. They need to put a choke button in here. I'm just saying. It's important. Yeah. <laughs> My brawling check is a 20. All righty. Uh, so that is a success. Um, Seven damage. Yep. Uh, so you, you, feel, you feel him, like, struggling. He starts kicking his legs a little bit. Uh, and then... We go back to Levite. Uh, this van flips over right in front of you. Uh, you see this guy crawling out the top of it. Uh, I'm going to go right for that guy. Uh, uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to ditch. I'm going to not ditch the heavy pistol. I'm going to shoot the heavy pistol, pull out my sword, and just two swipes um, at this guy. Um, you see, he, here's, here's the thing. Like, um, <sighs> You you got a katana like that's that's your that's you I have like a not a cavalry saber but it's shaped more like a saber it's a curved blade one 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 side that's one perfect. blade that is perfectly thing. fine that's yeah timid. yeah like mine is more like if I it like I don't know why but I'm feeling like a little more a little more like half cutlass half scimitar like kind of pirate sword more like that but not like yeah not gauche it's yeah. not gauche you got a saber yeah it's, it's cool. a fucking sword. All right, yeah, I'm going to do a couple of these. Saber, man. There's he has, one. He has a gun, Boom. and he There's aims two. at you. But, oh, oh, shit. So he's going to try to counter that. Uh, he doesn't, because those are both really good rolls. Uh, give me damage twice on that. Damage twice. There's one. And there's two. Uh, melee is just flat damage, right? What? Melee is... Oh, my sword is 3d6. It's 3d6. It's not plus anything, huh? Uh, I don't... I don't think they so. do don't... that in this game, do they? I, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a plus. In, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't have a, a plus. Oh, God, yeah, because is there like a, is there like a, a strength modifier or something? No, uh, there's not. No, yeah, it's just it's so. whatever the sword has. Uh, so yeah, you you hit him twice, uh, and you uh, ding up his armor pretty good. Uh, he's wearing like a uh, a body armor, a light flak jacket um, underneath his clothing. Mm. And then three and a thirds. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and uh, well, no, you said he dinged up his armor. How far am I away from the guy that's crawling out of the van? Uh, not very. Cool. I want to go ahead and use my ocular implant dart eye to shoot through his armor. Okay. Well, we don't, I mean, I have to assume that inside the building, Jamila, Brecht, and Montana are fighting for their lives, and they're going to need to kill people to stay alive. Should we maybe, Levite, uh, keep this guy alive for some questioning because we don't really know what's going on here. And you've dinged him up pretty bad. We fucked up his ride. 
He seems to be alone. Should I just <laughs> snag him instead of shooting him? That's up to you, man. Oh, no, I'm asking you. I, for me. He I is, love that uh, uh, three and a third is like, yeah, we fucked up his ride. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> You're asking me as I'm, like, cutting him to shit. I'm like, yeah, let's save this guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So I want to go up and incapacitate him. Maybe pull my katana out and use the butt of it to hit him right behind his tiny little bitch ass ear. Absolutely. Yeah, no, so you still <laughs> not his super big badass ear. You still his tiny attack normal. Ass ear. That's this, this, this one. <coughs> yeah, it's a it's normal attack. It's just you just tell me you're doing not lethal and I just stow that away in my mind. Gotcha. I'm going to go ahead and do a non lethal attack then. Right. Sorry. A non lethal attack on the guy with the bitch ass ears. Got it. Tiny, tiny bitch ass ears. Tiny bitch ass ears. Teeny, teeny, teeny. At least this guy got named. You didn't have to write one yourself. <laughs> oh boy, bitch ears. Fucking <laughs> little ears, Eddie. I don't know why they call me that. Little noise, little bitches. <laughs> <laughs> It's a birth defect. It's not uh, my so problem. That, I got small ears. That one hits. Uh, go ahead and give me your other attack as well. Cool. There it is. There it is. Oh, even better. Okay, so yeah. Uh, he tries to defend himself by just putting his arms up. He still has his gun in his hand, but uh, you you pop, pop, and you hit him really hard in the back of the head twice. Mm. Uh, Is he sleeping? Uh, no, no. You need to give me the damage. Oh, on non-lethal too. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's still it's still uh, acts exactly the same. It's just instead of when he would normally die, uh, he. Oh my god, that yes. Wow. Those are some rolls, my friend. No joke. Hey, there you go. Pow, pow. Uh, yeah, he's going to take <laughs> some damage dude. there. Uh, you actually break his armor a little bit there, so that's good. He'll now be easier to do damage to. Three to thirds has got bricked. You just threw this guy over the railing. <clears throat> yes, uh... Can I see others that are on this level? Uh, you see the guy uh, through the smoke with your infrared that is being choked by Montana across the way. Uh, you see the guy you threw over the edge uh, kind of try to raise his gun at you. Uh, mm. And then you see the person that was behind Montana shot through the face. Gotcha. Um, I would like to follow up on the guy that I just tossed off. The catwalk? You just did what to? <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to uh, uh, grapple hand uh, like quick on top of him. Just slam down. Like you're, just gonna, my... you're just going to stop him. Yeah. All right. So, give me an athletics check. Cool. <laughs> Break into a warehouse. There's <laughs> a security guard. Uh, with your grapple hand, it is pretty easy. It's an easy check uh, to just, like, land on him. Uh, his, his back breaks. You hear him die. <laughs> it's it's kind of gross. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> He just gets folded around this thing. Uh, he drops his gun. Yeah. Cool. Oh. He's like, he's like, I was only three days away from retirement. No. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. And now, uh, this guy is going to try and break out of your grapple, Gary, Montana. No. So it's an opposed check. And that's athletics, right? Yeah. Or brawling. No, brawl. It's brawl. Brawling. It's all brawling. It's all brawling. I've rolled a 16 for brawling. Ooh, yeah, he, 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 like, almost gets out. Like, he gets his hands under there, and you, like, just, like, you knock his as hands he's, down. Right as he's trying to get out, I just hit his head against the wall twice, and he loses that grip and reaches back up. Now it's your turn hands. to try to choke him more. Uh, yes, I do. I will go ahead and try to choke him more with my brawling. 
For a 17? Yep, that is higher than what he rolled. So I'm going to, I'm still behind him, I'm going to knock him down to the ground and then like extend and pull and choke and try to break his neck all at once. Yeah, he's... Uh, that's seven damage. Yeah, you again. can hear him, uh, you can hear him trying to breathe. Uh, and he's, uh, you're, you're, you got him like a Boston crab kind of thing at this point, and you can hear his legs kicking behind you. Uh, yeah, and then the guy that's in front of you, his leg starts twitching because he's dead. And then, yeah, I guess it is, uh, this guy in the car is now going to open fire. Uh, he has, uh, he has a, uh, SMG in his hand, and he sprays it around at you guys, full auto, he just pulls the trigger, uh, and he's- He's holding it with one hand? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> they, they are actually one-handed weapons. One. He's strong as hell, boy, now when they start kicking. <laughs> he's so strong. So strong. Uh, Yeah. Um, so the first of it comes at, I guess he's going to shoot at you three and a thirds. Uh, you can try to dodge. For show. Sure. That's, uh, evasion? Yeah. Cool. And you have to beat his roll. Oh, 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 the guy I was fighting goes unconscious. Does he? Yeah, after three rounds of being choked, you go unconscious no matter how much health you have left. Oh, good. Because I didn't want you to have to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I read it in the rules, and I was like, hold on, let me go check before I spout this random shit. Yeah, they don't make you choke somebody for 35 rounds. Good, good, <laughs> three, good. Three yeah. rounds, that makes sense. That makes sense. Bummer. Uh, Bummer. But yeah, he is unconscious now. So, yeah, so there's like a, there's like a crack, and he goes unconscious. Uh, I rolled a 19 for evasion on yeah. those, so, uh, uh, that spray. So he goes, and you just kind of put your foot on the gun, and it just sprays the wall. Uh, and then, Levite, you're top of the order, back to Levite. Uh, th that's what happens. That guy almost blows your face off, but three and a thirds puts his foot on the gun. Uh, Am I allowed to say something to him as I put my foot on the gun? Yeah. Uh, I want to tell him... That he has the option to get out of this alive if he prefers to have a conversation. Uh yeah, go ahead and persuade. I'll let you I'll let you get a free persuade off here. Cool. Uh, um Yeah. Persuasion chip. Persuading. Um, also, uh, Jahan, uh, what does this guy look like? Does he look like a uh, merc? Does he look like a scientist? Does he look like... He looks different. He looks like uh, a ganger. A ganger? Yeah, a gangbanger. Dig. They call it, they, they, uh, gang members in Cyberbunk are called gangers. God, I really... G hold on. Where's that slang sheet? There is, there's lit... There's literally a whole slang sheet uh, mm -hmm. for uh, for cyberpunk. Um, yeah, there is a whole slang sheet. Yeah, persuasion I of nineteen. Uh, I mean, wow. he's going. He'll, he'll think about it, uh, and then it's Levi's turn. If you really need the slang, it's on page twenty-four of the Cyberpunk Red Role Playing Guide. Oh, wait, page twenty-four <laughs> of the Cyberpunk Red. Role playing guy. Okay. Street slang. All right. Be chilled, you piece of shit. <laughs> um. I'm so glad you had to look that up in. <laughs> uh. I'm gonna go Ronin on your ass if you don't. Okay, this is really. I'm not there gonna. Go. That no, back. that's pretty good. That's not bad. That's exactly. That's exactly right. That is actually a threat. Yeah. All right. Um. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh. I'm gonna put. Huh. Yeah. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna put my sword right up next to his throat and uh, and basically persuade him even more. 
Um, <laughs> you want to walk away from this alive. Yeah, we'll say just for the sake of cool, uh, you guys both have your swords at his throat now, and he puts his hands up with the persuasion check. Um, really, all I need to know is whether or not you attacked him. Uh, yeah, no, uh, but I am. Yeah, I do have. Guys, I do have my. I do have my. And uh, now in my in my left hand, I do have my gun out. Uh, if anyone else is going to pop out of this car or around the corner, I I am keeping an eye out to shoot whatever uh, whatever tries to pop out at us. Absolutely, uh, it is full of orphans, and when the first one pops his head out, you yep. just <laughs> boom, popped, and it goes through two of them. They're, them's them smuggling. <laughs> You know, um, yeah, orphans so have soft bones because they don't drink a lot of milk. That guy surrenders, and everyone has been neutralized. That is here. Uh, now we're out of initiative order. Everyone can reconnect now. Interesting. All right, well, let's drag, let's drag this piece of shit over to the car, and we can secure him. I've got some rope if I need it. Um. Uh, yeah. Um. I'll do. Actually, you know what? I'll do that. It's my car. I'll do that. Uh, third, look through this. Uh, look through this car and see if there's anything interesting in here, because you'll have better eyes for that. <clears throat> it breaks. Gotcha. Help me with this wall. Gotcha. So I want to check the van out. Uh, I do have nasal filters, if that applies here, because I know that they were shits in with some pretty heavy stuff there. Uh, yeah. So you open it up. Uh, there are broken vials all over the place, um, and it can be inhaled uh so it's good thing your nasal filters will turn on you'll and you don't turn into a giant rage monster um but yeah all that's back here is a case of drugs and then like some empty boxes to kind of go around it cool i definitely want to snap a picture of that and send it to liz absolutely whoop she'll just be like omg LOL. <laughs> can, I, can I tell her that she's fucking fired, ROF? <laughs> fucking worthless, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said you said the picture. She gets it. Uh, and then uh, you, you and Brecht are checking out the wall, Montana. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, also, uh, there was a guy in a hazmat suit that went to the back, right? That's this wall that we're checking out, yeah, I think. Yeah, you go to where you saw him go, expecting okay. to find a back room. There's nothing there. It's a wall. Yes, I, I assumed it was a false wall. Yeah. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. No, it's okay. It's a fair assumption. Because <laughs> uh, I kind of hinted at it. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I so... Am gonna, I am just going to mention over comms that we do have a, a hostage I'm taking back to the car. Uh, we haven't searched this whole building yet. There's a whole lab, maybe underground. Sick. Yeah, it does seem like there's more to this facility. Maybe you should pull the car into the garage and we should uh, work from here. Dunzo. Yeah, you guys pull the car into the garage. You guys are all inside. You guys are at this wall. Uh, and you find a panel. Uh, and it has a handprint device. Hey, guy. In my car. Get your ass away. He'll be there. Uh, more yeah. description of this guy. Uh, he he has uh, some kind of wild dreadlocks. Um, and he's wearing very... They're good clothes. They're very... Uh, I don't know how to describe them. Uh, I don't know, he has like a nice jacket on, but it's kind of... It's trendy. It's a trendy jacket. Uh, he's wearing baggy, like, denim pants. Uh, but they're like acid wash and like very nice. Uh, and he has some uh, very great shoes on. He's in style, and he. But you can tell by his tattoos that he is in a gang. Probably not his handprint. We'd need. Yeah, he looks. I'm gonna like grab. <laughs> I want to grab one of the uh, bodies that Montana, the one that Montana choked out. Yeah, there you go. I, I want to chop his hand off. <clears throat> Ooh. Uh, so this yeah, passed out like guy. Huh? It looked like in, a, in this warehouse there were a couple of hired mercs, maybe a couple of local talent, and some buyers. Uh, I think all the uh, all the cookers are downstairs behind this wall. 
Well, local talent's the palm that we're going to need. Buyers aren't going to have access, and Mercs won't either. Local talent it is, and I'll bring him that body that is currently unconscious, actually. I just cracked his neck and left him alive. Uh, so oh, he's better. He's not dead. I'm still taking the hand, son. Uh, I wake up. So you know that if you chop his hand off, it might not work. Because, like, ah. they, 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 uh... It's like a, a a system that's meant to stop cheating the system. It, it can detect your pulse, and it needs to be the right hand with a pulse. Well, we lucked out that he's unconscious. Let's he just put his little meat sack up to it. <laughs> I'm glad you guys didn't kill everybody. <laughs> yeah, that would have been shitty. Good call, third. Uh, but yeah, so you put your hand, his hand on there. It opens up. Uh, the wall slides open, and there's an elevator. All right, I'm bringing him back to... Wait, no, he's coming with us. Who is? The the ganger? Yeah, the ganger. Not the ganger, the one whose hand we used to open the door. The local is, town. Is the ganger coming too? I would assume so. We've got him already, and I believe he was already <laughs> bound. So for right now, we've got him. But maybe we should have Jamila watch these guys or something, unless she'll just dome check them for no reason. She can I don't mind taking uh, I don't mind taking the the handprint guy down just in case we need a bartering tool or a human shield. But or I don't think the handprint. gangers I don't think the gangers are much use to us right now. Sweet, we'll lock the ganger in the uh, in the in the truck in the car. She'll she'll grab his restraints and she'll kick out the back of his leg and she'll like put her gun across his shoulder and be like, I got it. I want to okay. pull out my katana and put it to the back of her neck and ask her not to very calmly. Not to what? Not to shoot the guy in the head. No, he doesn't Not point yet. it at her head. She point. She puts it like on his shoulder, like to let him know who's boss. Never mind. I didn't move. Maybe I sneezed. Cause <laughs> then tight. Yeah. So she's uh. Yeah. She she knocks him down, and then it's like I got him. Uh, sorry, that's Since it's Levite's tight. apparently that's developing tight. a crush. She'll take off her hood, and like her purple glowing hair will blow in the wind she summoned. Classy broad. There you go. <clears throat> is she a shiksa though? Like, I don't know what that. Means. Yeah, she's definitely a shiksa. I don't Her know. Her name is uh, But yeah, so uh, you guys going down the elevator? Boop. Uh, you need his handprint again in here. So good thing you brought him. Uh, and the elevator starts to go down and down and down. Don't forget to ask her if she's in a main line. Uh, Levite. That's that's the street slang for long term relationship in the cyberpunk world. <laughs> no, I'm chilled. I'm chilled. Don't make me go Ronin on. <laughs> Maybe What's I take up, you to the Naya? night market. You want to go mainline? I was What's your what it was like to role play with old people. Yo, let's you know. Let's trying to affect this future slang makes you guys sound really old. Yeah, man. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. I'm just a booster from the hood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyone at home, you, if you get the PDF, page 24, you can find out what all these words are. Uh, you yeah, can feel like a booster, too. You guys. Yeah. Oh, God, that sounds. <laughs> you guys uh, ride the elevator down. Uh, it goes down for a while. You see the camera in here is also deactivated from the earlier clipping of the cameras. Hey, good work with that, Brecht. I'll notice the camera and realize that they don't know we're coming. I'm going to go ahead and mention that somebody knows that we're coming. Because if all the cook guys were downstairs, this tells us that nobody should be coming down. So they're going to they're gonna be waiting for us. So I, I'm going to let the group know that I think we should prepare a little bit and maybe put Mr. Handprint out in front to catch some flack. All right, I'm reloading. I'll human shield him. All right. So uh, Montana has a human shield. He has his, I guess, sidearm out. Uh, I want to be standing up against the button panel, so like facing the back of the elevator with the the opening over my shoulder. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you guys get on down. Uh, ooh, we got some bits. Thanks. <laughs> we got oh, thanks. For page 24. twenty-four. Twenty-four bits for page twenty-four. Uh, yeah. So the the. Bang. And very anticlimactically, no one's waiting for you. But there's a there's a hallway. Uh, it's like a very long white hallway. There aren't any doors immediately 
next to you. There aren't like any right off of the thing. You have to walk down this hallway a little bit. It's like some Resident Evil laser room shit, man. We gotta be careful. Uh huh. Absolutely. I'm gonna slowly step off the elevator with the human shield in front of me with my chrome revolver to his head. I'm gonna be right behind uh, Montana. I got I got my gun over uh, kind of over Montana's shoulder, but making sure that like it's not too close to his ears because I don't want to I don't want to deafen Montana. That doesn't sound like a good time. <laughs> All right, handprint. Tell me who's in charge here and how to get to him. He's. Uh... <laughs> he's still he's, he's out cold. Uh, he won't be up for another few minutes. Uh, you can wait if you want to wait. That's fine. If you want to interrogate. Him. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think I do. I don't think I want to drag a completely asleep body. At least he can use his legs that way. Uh, all right, yeah, so, so I'll let him things, wake up before we go down the elevator. A couple things happen. Uh, you set the body down. Uh. And as you're doing that, you look around. Uh, I'll say, uh, since Brecht is the one that disabled the cameras, Brecht will notice that the ones down here seem to be on, but they aren't pointed directly at you yet. Mm, okay. I relay that information. Hold up, everyone. There are cameras. <laughs> <sighs> it's a good thing I stopped for a break. <sighs> is Can I see any access points or uh, anything to... For this security system? Uh, access points are pretty or easy not. to come by. Um, okay. You could find one not that far away. Uh, you open it up, uh, and man, it looks different. Uh, <laughs> it, it is much more advanced. Gotcha. Uh, but you can still try to um, it. Are there any sort of brand markings of the electrical components inside the new panel that he's opened? Like, uh, where they came from? Yeah, like a company or a serial number, like any information at all, even the gauge of why or anything uh, like that. It, you see, you do see it like a security company. Uh, it probably came from Militech or Arasaka. Yeah. Ooh, so, but I'll we don't say, have a model number. I'll say specifically they got it from Militech. Militech, interesting. Um, <clears throat> cool. So. I would like to try uh, to turn off the cameras, but I would like to use luck. Okay. Uh, nice. I'm going to use uh, the rest of my luck, which is four. And is that a bit? That's a basic tick roll. Yeah, you can do basic tick again. Cool. It's very yep. seventeen, 17. all together. Great job, great job, Brick. Great job, Matthew. Both in real life and in game. Uh, yeah, you do hit uh, the. <laughs> I was going to have you go for the one above difficult, which is professional, which the threshold you have hit. So, bite, bite, exactly the right amount. <laughs> uh, so, I'm glad you used all your luck points, and boom! Uh, you are able to disengage. Once again, they will notice that their security system is off, but they won't be able to see so yeah, cameras are off. We better uh, we better hurry. Yeah, Good. Much, I think this guy is just starting to wake up. Yeah, pretty much what this affects too is you just like ripped the uh, circuit out. Um, yeah, the guy will wake up. All right, handprint. Ah, who's in charge around here, and how do we get to his office? Uh, little bitch ears. Little bitch. Ears. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, He's yeah, bad. He'll, he'll explain to you where to go. It's just down the hall, uh, and you're going to make a couple turns. Great. And then I'll wrap his head in duct tape. Like Not his whole head. Just him. like... Nah, just like three times around his around his face, and so he can still breathe. Okay. But I don't have time to just do little strips of duct tape. I'll just wrap it around his face real quick. Okay. And then you're going to tie him up and leave him here? Nah, I'm gonna, he's my human shield, and now he can't scream. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, you guys continue on down this hallway. Um, so what you're going to see after a little bit, the hallway actually does have some stuff on the left and right. You're going to see some labs uh, with equipment in them. There are people in there uh, working. Um, we've all gotten off the elevator, is that correct? I believe so. 
Cool. Um, in that case, then, I want to take pictures of all of this stuff as we go and send them to the ever-worthless Liz Tobin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you, you, you take some uh, photos with your agent um, as you go down this hall. If you guys are too obvious, uh, what with the human shield and all, they someone might notice. Um, how do you want to go about this? Are you stealthy uh, or are you going they know someone's here, but they don't know it's a threat. Maybe we should use our handprint here. As a quiet way in. Your handprint? Yeah, the guy, the meat shield guy. What are you going to do with him? I'm we, thinking about maybe sending him forward. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think we need to move quick before they realize these cameras are off. And as long as we have him, we might have a key. So you guys are just yeah. going to try and rush past. Gotcha. Unless uh, so somebody else has a better plan, I think we got to strike quick. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense to me. Uh, so you, uh, yeah. three and a third's pauses to take a couple photos, uh, but the guy holding the human shield goes quickly. Uh, so uh, a couple people like look up, but they don't really know what to make of what they're seeing. Uh, they are working. Uh, you see them three and a third since you take the time. You do see them. They're looking at microscopes. They have. Um, they're they're doing. You see them doing various different trials. You can see that they're doing a series. Um, you can tell that much since you work at a pharmaceutical company. Can I tell who's obviously I know it's not my company, but can I tell based on their equipment or anything like that whose company it is? They have uh, they have equipment from several different companies. Uh, it just seems like you would have bought the same stuff if you had to outfit a lab. You know what I mean? It is well funded. You can tell that. Um. Oh, hmm. step. So Brecht. Next thing you roll, uh, you get a boon. Awesome. Thank so, you. Uh, that is from Connor, incompetent user. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, after that, you, you tell they're well-funded, and then you guys uh, continue on. Uh, you hit the end of the hallway. It goes left. It goes right. Uh, you see to the left uh, cells. You can tell there's cells. There's bars on the windows. Uh, and then to the right, uh, you can see a door at the end of the hallway. I don't think we should mess with whatever they've got in those cells if it's been on these drugs. Yup. Yeah, rage drugs plus cells doesn't add up to me as, like, a good idea. Maybe we see if anybody's unaffected on the way out, but for now, let's let sleeping dogs lie. Yeah, that sounds right. So, you guys uh, hook it to the right, then, I assume. Yes. So, you get to the end of the hallway. There's a door. Uh, it has a little window. Inside, you can see... Uh, I'll I'll I'll, let, I'll say Montana since you're doing the human shield you look in real quick uh, and then you pull away uh, the quick scan of the room is it's an office it's a nice office uh, it's very uncluttered and minimalistic there is like a little water feature uh, in the middle of the room it's pretty nice right. uh, and then you can see a uh, a window a big like full wall window you can't tell you didn't look long enough to see through it uh, but you don't see anyone in this room it's an office it's a nice office with a water feature. <laughs> Did you nice. have a water feature? Yeah, it's pretty nice, but uh, I don't see anybody in there. There's a whole window on the other side. I can't see what it looks out to. Well, That's probably uh, an old corporate trap. Water features are a thing of the past. Boom! I kicked the door in. You kick the door in, uh, and you look around. No yeah. one's in there. Oh. Huh. You guys right, uh, enter this room. Uh, there's a desk. There's a computer terminal at the desk. Uh, it's a very, it's a nice computer. Uh, there is a couch and um, some personal effects, uh, kind of like an extra suit, that kind of thing. Uh, you see a coat rack. It has a lab coat on it. And then you see nice, um, a nice suit. And is it in my size? Uh, it's not in your size. I'll shove the guy to the ground <laughs> since nobody's in here. Yeah. Uh, I'll shove him to the ground and then rip the or cut the duct tape with my knife. Absolutely. Uh, so there is a door in here, uh, and it leads to where the window oversees. The window oversees kind of like an operating theater in that kind of like uh, it's like at the top part where you know how it's kind of like a mini arena kind of looking thing. 
That's what it looks like. Uh, you can see uh, people down there. What the hell's going on in this facility? I say to the guy that we're calling Handprint. <laughs> yeah, uh, Hands. He'll be like, I don't, I, I don't know. I just work here, man. I just work here. They never let me at this part. I, 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 I've never been down to the offices. Yeah, well, then why don't you get up and take a look through this window with us and tell us what you see, and I'll shove him up against the glass. He'll, like, he doesn't want to look. Like, he's, like, looking away. The way I see it is we have potentially harmful creatures locked in cages at one end of the hallway and a bunch of people that we maybe don't want around at the other end of the hallway. What do you guys say a little bit of a controlled diversion? Well, as long as nothing gets out of the elevator, we should be fine. <clears throat> We could give them a taste of their own medicine and break the elevator shaft, but we need some answers first. Mm -hmm. Somebody check that data terminal on that desk and see if there's anything in there. Yeah. Yeah. Hands is just like, yeah, they only I, I've only ever been to the lab uh, at the front part. I've never been this deep in. I would like to check the data terminal. You would like to check the data terminal. That, I don't know if that's actually a tech rule. Let me take a let me take a gander at a character sheet. Time for some commercial break. <laughs> I can't actually do that if I want to, but I don't have a. You know what else we can do? We can remind everybody that if you join us on the twenty sixth in just two days at seven p.m. Central to ten p.m. Central, uh, we'll be doing a charity event for survivors of sexual assault and uh, sexual crimes. And we'll be playing City of Mist by Amit Moshe and giving away a free starter set for City of Mist. So tune in to yes. win a free game and support survivors. We are doing our second ever giveaway and our first ever uh, charity event. So I am pretty excited uh, for these. We're hitting these milestones and I like it. Let's see. Is there something better than basic tech for Brecht to use with his boon? Uh, 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 basic tech or cyber tech? Uh, it, I guess basic tech is the best. Um, technically, I should have had you using electric security, but luckily your skills are equal in all the tech skills. So go ahead and just, yeah, roll me a basic tech. 16. 16 is not bad. You have a boon, which allows you to hit professional level by exactly the number for like the tenth time damn uh, have you on fucking exactly. fire tonight hell yes that's what 17. i'm talking about literally a 17 but yeah so you uh enter uh you you go ahead and do the back door trick that you know uh one of your one of your buddies taught you you know a lot of people uh and you get in through uh you know i think i know exactly who taught you uh didn't he roll initiative earlier and forget to take a turn who? Davy Jones. That's who it was. Davey oh, Jones. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Davy Jones taught you. Davy Jones taught you this I trick. Did. I almost made something happen. <laughs> I did. Uh, but yeah, so. Uh, where's the information I need here? Oh, here it is. Okay. What's his name? That's right. Oh, God. I'm not looking forward to this name all right so uh you it's a very clean and tidy desktop uh it reflects the room around it very well uh there are a few folders and they have you you start opening stuff and you see like dna sequences that you don't understand uh you see uh chemical charts uh you see 3d diagrams of molecules uh you don't really understand it but then you start finding some video files uh, and you start seeing, uh, there's a man standing there, uh, and he'll say, uh, trial 34. Uh, and then he'll administer the drug. And then, uh, in this particular case, we'll say his eyes explode. And he's screaming, ah, ah, and that's what happens on the, uh, screen. And then you'll go to the next one, and it'll be much the same. Trial 54, uh... You know, and the guy's, uh, the guy's neck muscles will ex pop, uh, and you'll see, like, just that like, you could tell he's just internally bleeding, and he just dies very quickly. 
these. Uh, and there's a lot of these. Yeah, I can't look at this. I'm not look. I'm not looking at that computer terminal. It's not happening. I put in one of my uh, chips that I carry and copy all of that. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, the information is downloaded. You are free to do that. Uh, and you have this bank of uh, information now. Um, and then the door gets kicked in. Uh, and there are guards, and they just open fire. <laughs> like, oh, hey! Boop, 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 boop. And so now we're going to go back into initiative for our second combat. Everybody give me initiative. Yeah, you guys are already doing it. Eight for Montana Jack. Eight, Montana. Seven, three and a thirds. <laughs> Montana, you rolled a one. You finally did it. You rolled that crit fail on your initiative. And I still beat three and a third. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, boom. Uh, that's going to be the turn order is uh, Levite. Again, top of the order. Then Brecht. Then, unfortunately, uh, the guards... And then, uh, Montana. Did the guards come through the door by the glass, or did they come through the door that we came through? Uh, they came through the door that you came through. Okay. Yeah, I have a question when you get a chance about where I am, because you said I got hung up taking pictures. So am I with everybody you're in with the room, or am I still in the hallway? Okay, yeah, cool. you're with everybody. You just got held up for a minute. Like you're just that gives you the opportunity to be the last one in the room if you want to be, which makes you the closest one to these guys when they come through the door. You are probably closest to the door. That's fair. Uh, and so, I will say, I was one of, I was not by the computer terminal because I did not want to see what was going yeah, you on. You literally just um, said you walked away. I like it. I like it. So I again, was by the computer terminal putting a chip in, so I'm behind the desk oh, from yeah, these you guys. Are behind the desk now. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, so it's the door on the right. Uh, and then the rounded room goes and goes and goes. Uh, and that's a window in front of the desk, like straight fr across from the desk. And then to the left, there's another door. Uh, and then behind you, the, there's like a shelf with books, like actual books on it. Uh, and like files and like some statues and stuff like that. Little. Uh, and then in the middle of the room is that little water feature. It's like a, it's like a pond. It's not very big. Uh, and it has like a little waterfall that comes from the ceiling. Uh, and it's one of those clear, that, that cool, clear waterfall that goes down the middle all the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and these guys kick in the door to your right. Uh, and they file in. They just... In the, boom, 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 boom. Uh, so, Levi... Uh, can I flip the desk for cover, reactionary, before they fucking turn us into switch cheese? Yeah, I'll let it happen. Uh, you flip over the desk immediately, uh, yanking the USB drive out as you do it. You're like, ah! Uh, and then you and Levi are behind this desk. Levi, your turn. Great. Um, that door, that other door, does it have a, uh, does it have a, uh, a hand thing, a lock, or does it seem like it would just open? It does have a lock. Okay. Well, then in that case, I am going to, uh, uh, under the cover of the desk, uh, return fire. As you're under the cover of the desk, you notice that there's a button. little button there uh but yeah just so you know and then now you what do you do um i don't trust a button that could call more guards to us um but that's just me i'm not i'm trying not to meta game this because game player layton really wants to press the button but levite would probably be afraid that it would just summon that's more fair. guards it is just an ominous looking little red button under the desk it could call more security yeah, if I had if I had uh, if I had a, an important desk with the security guards, that would that would be what that button would be. Um, that's fuck me, fuck. Um, oh no! I'm not gonna do the scroll up thing because it's. What well, did you commit suicide? He rolled a five, <laughs> and then he rolled an eighteen. Uh, so oh, I don't roll contested. They're, they're not fast. Enough. Whoops! Uh, so I'm gonna hit. Oh no! So you go. And there's a guy out front with a shield. Uh, and it, it just pings off the shield. But then you get it over the shield and you hit someone behind him uh, with the second shot. Uh, go ahead and give me that damage. 
<sighs> Damage. Hey, there we go. Congratulations, nice. you got through someone's armor. Uh, so his armor is going to be at a minus one now. Uh, and he's going to take the remainder damage. Uh, so, yeah, there it is. So yeah, his armor, you, you actually uh, dented his armor and hurt him. And he's like, ah, he takes one in the chest. And then, Brecht, you are uh, at the computer terminal with... Um, Oh yeah, sorry, Levi. You weren't under the desk. I don't know why. I, I went and I desk. dove under the desk. You dove what... under the desk. Okay, so yeah. all three of you are there now. Okay. I yeah, I had walked you. away. There was no better cover that I could You're see. Like, ah! Montana. Yeah, all three of you are back there. Brecht. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Uh, there um... are just to set the scene. There are four guys levying assault rifles. Or three guys, sorry. Three guys levying assault rifles. There's one guy in front of them with a heavy pistol and a shield. Um, and I saw the button, right? Yeah, you saw the button, too. It's there. Um, you know what? I'm going to smack that bad boy. It goes, and the door. Yes. Open. That's what I... Um, cool. So what... Uh... Quick Did question: it Pops open or pops closed? Open. The the, so the, the, the door, door on the left open. pops open. When he hits the button and it open, can I react and try to dive through it because there's four people like directly behind me, or is that not a thing? Uh, yeah, you can run across the room and try and get out of here. Oh uh, yeah, I just want to get like use the door as cover essentially. So I want to be on the inside of that room, but still engaged in what's happening. Gotcha. So you're gonna dive through there uh, as soon as it pops up. You're like ah. Uh, and then, yeah, Brick. Um, I want to run into that room that I just opened up. You also run into the room. Okay. Uh, you're in there now. Um, so when you get into this room, it is, like I said, it's an operating theater. Uh, you guys are kind of on, like, the stairs. It's not very long stairs. It just kind of leads right down to, like, the viewing area. Oh, David Is Jones there... has doomed the security guard. Uh, the next one to go. So that's good. <laughs> um, are there any, like, uh, oxygen tanks or anything? So as you look down, uh, there are. There's someone down there. Um, and they are... There's someone strapped to a table. Uh, near mm. they're, they're using the oxygen on them. Interesting. Uh my my reaction is to go check on that person. Okay, right so you're now. gonna go down into the operating theater. Yeah. Okay, so you you go on down there uh, and you can look over and like behind you is still like the room uh, mm. where all this like you can see in there through the window and then down there there's a a man, uh, two men dressed in full scrubs, mm. uh, and they are administering something uh, to this guy. Cool. Um, I want to aim my gun at the oxygen and say, drop what you're doing or we all blow up. Uh, the guy will look up. Uh, and at that, we'll go to the next turn. Uh, but that, that's what happens. Uh, and then they're going to open fire in the room. Uh, they all full auto. All of them full auto. So, uh, well, let's see how much damage that does. Because the way it works is they're going to hit that desk you're behind. Yeah, the bulletproof desk, right? That's made out of adamantium. <laughs> it's adamantium desk. It's adamantium adamantium desk. Came, Absolutely. It came from a meteor and a wizard summoned it. It's actually just Wolverine as a desk. Uh, they need to be hitting a certain threat. Made out of celebrity <laughs> abdominal muscles. <laughs> Fortunately, none of them were terribly effective. And quite uh, the show, Tinsman. But mm -hmm. they did shoot it a lot, so that's... So, uh, it does take all of them uh, shooting full auto at the desk, but they pretty much eliminate that cover. Uh, but they don't hit you guys. That's the important part. You guys do completely weather the first wave of gunfire. It's like straight out of one of those cartoons, like you dive behind something, they all shoot it, and it just like disintegrates, and yeah. you just kind of... 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have a whole cover system in this. It's really cool. Uh, Monty. Uh, I'm going to jump over the now useless desk while they're in the midst of reloading and go take the shield from the guy who has the shield. Uh, point of fact, they are not reloading, but yes. They have ceased firing for now. Yes. Good enough for me. Uh, but yeah, you can go try and wrestle that guy for his shield. Mm-hmm, give it to me. Hey, yeah, go ahead and give me that brawl check. I'll have it be a Give it. Crit! That's, give me that grit. 27! That nice. I was going to make more stuff happen before you got it, but hey, man, you ripped that right out of his hands. I wanted 35 time. rounds of choking, goddammit. Yeah, there you go. 35 <laughs> rounds of choking. Uh, title of my sex <laughs> tape. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're in my movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... I knew I recognized you guys from somewhere. So you ripped the shield out of his hands, uh, and then you have the shield. Yes, I do. I do have the shield. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much your turn at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can move. I would all move back to the door that everybody's going through and block that doorway with the shield. Absolutely. Uh, and then, three and a thirds, you are behind him now. And it is um, your turn. You're through that doorway. Did, did we miss my turn? No, you went first. Oh. Yeah, he shot twice, and then he opened the door, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like everybody has stranded our driver, and I feel like we're going to need him. Yeah, he, um, is, he is over there by himself right now. Uh, but he goes out. Uh, so. Damn, that's tough. Um... Shit, a bunch of people in the chat going, yoink! And by a bunch of people, I mean Connor. And it's funny, because you stole the shield. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's going on in this operating theater, remind me? Because I'm up at the door, uh, and... Uh, it's like a hostage-style Brecht- situation Brecht- where Brecht is threatening them. Uh, you hear it. You hear him be like, stop what you're doing, or I'll shoot the tank. Great. I want to go ahead and stride down to where the surgery is happening. Because if we're all going to blow up when he shoots a tank, I don't really give a shit about my distance. But I want to get a closer look at what they're doing. I mean, at this point, I, I'm, I know that they have my company's drug. Uh, but I want to get within range, at least, of these two scrub-wearing guys. Uh, so, yeah, and when, see you, what I- when you get to the top, you can look down. Uh, you Actually, this is the first time you've seen the drug uh, from your company. It's down there. Uh, they have some of it. Uh, it's not that's not what they're using, but you do see some Evo, is what it's called uh, down there. Uh, and then you see there's two people. One of uh, both of them are in scrubs, so you can't really tell too much about their features. But they uh, they're both have like they're both kind of backed away at this point. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, you. I would like to get a sample of the drug that they're administering that is not my company's Evo. Uh, you're going to have to go down there. Right now, there's kind of a standoff happening. I can't move during the standoff? You can. <laughs> but if you go down... Like, right now, if he blows up the tanks, you might be okay. If you go down there, you'll fucking die as soon as he shoots it. Oh, my bad. I assumed I was already within No, it's No, like, of- it's like an operating theater. You're in the top. And then, like, you look down, and there's, like, that little arena area. Oh, area. my bad. You mean, like, surgery. Yeah. Being somebody that works in theater, I'm picturing, like, a, a live theater that no, is in no, operation. No. It's, it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> yeah. it's a surgery viewing God. theater, yeah. Not a doctor. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Hashtag not a doctor. <laughs> but uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and... Are there seats in this theater? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and take one of the seats and watch this standoff play out. Absolutely. I like it. Um, and then, Levi, now it's your turn. You're alone in this room behind a shit desk. Yeah, I sure am. Uh, I'm going to run uh, out the desk towards the door uh, to get behind Montana Jack's shield. I'm going to fire a couple of shots uh, at that crowd as I go on by. Um, so let me go ahead and do my first... Uh, um, first boop, boop, and then another boop. Nice. Good shots. 
Let's see what we got. We got a 21. And a 19. And a 19. Those are both very good shots. Uh, yeah. So, uh, they are not dodging these. Uh, it is whether or not you hit in this situation. None of them are fast enough to dodge. Um, so, boom, boom. Which one are you aiming for? The same guy you hit? One of the two other guys? Or the guy that no longer has a shield? Um, the same guy that I hit. If I can take someone out, I'm going to take someone Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Give me that damage. Oh, yeah. All them Ds and damage. Damage. Not bad. Oh, uh, so yeah. that first one's going to rip on through uh, the same guy. Give him another minus one to his armor. Uh, which makes his armor... Yep. Which means... This attack. Out. <laughs> it's actually kind of hard sometimes. Alright, so... Yeah, no, yeah, you're going to do a pretty good amount of damage on that first hit. That second hit gets stopped by the vest, but only barely. Uh, and then you jump through the door behind Montana, right? Yeah, behind Montana. Absolutely. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick there with him because if <laughs> someone's got to hold the line. No, I like it. I like it. Brecht. At this point, they have backed off a little. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Um, how do we get out of here? Is there no way out? <laughs> uh, you do. Actually, I'm glad someone asked. That's a fun question. Uh, there is, there does seem to be another door in here that leads somewhere else. Mm. Um, cool. I, I know what I, I won't, can I pick up a, an oxygen, an oxygen tank? Uh, you'd have to go down there. In the wall. Okay. Um, yeah, I would like to. I'd like to pick one up. Uh, go down and pick one up if I can. Uh, yeah. Okay. You go down there to the room, mm -hmm. uh, and they both kind of do this. Mm. But they like they, they stay away from each other, and they stay back with their hands up. But they, you do notice them break off stop moving right now or i will blow us up they both I mean, they both stop okay do not move anymore or i will blow us up do you understand uh they kind of they, you see them look at each other they don't they haven't said anything yet but they look at each other and then they look back at you all right um hmm, and where where to take this <laughs> um actually uh three and a third Help yes. Me grab uh, grab one of these guys. Yeah, now's now's your chance to go get a sample, I guess. All right. Um I'll glance over at Brecht and then look over my shoulder at Montana and Levite and pull out my agent and descend the stairs. Um quick question though for Brecht. Did you mean guys as in one of the tanks that you grabbed or do you mean one of the dudes? I meant one of the yeah, one of the actual people. Cool. Then I'm gonna go ahead. Place. I'm gonna go ahead and approach. Uh, I want to get my information with my agent, but I want to approach um, the one closest to the the new door that we've discovered. Uh, so the new door is on the raised level, uh, oh. on the opposite side of where you are. Gotcha. I'm just gonna go down to. The one on the left, your right. left. Yeah, you grab. And, uh, and I want to, well, I want to just warn him that I'm going to stand by in case there's an issue. So I want to be like right up on him, but I don't want to disrespect his space yet because, you know, I'm a corpo. So as you get close, uh, they, uh, they have rippers and they just lash out at you. As soon, as soon as, uh, it's close enough for the shot to be risky for Brecht, uh, they make a move. Uh, and so we're going to resolve that in a second. Uh, but in the top room, do -do 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 -do. here it comes. Here it comes, man. Here comes the gravy. Here it comes! Are you fast enough to dodge shit? Yeah, hell yeah, I am. But I'm also behind a shield, so how does that work? Uh, if it hits you, then it hits the shield first. Uh, what, what is fast enough to dodge shit? Him. 
evasion over a 12 or something, right? I think it's over a 9. Okay, there you go. Oh, sweet. My evasion is a 14. Yeah. All of us have very high yeah, All evasion. of you are very 31! I rolled a fucking crit 31 evasion! Their He's bullets old. are nerf darts, and they can lick my entire bean bag. We'll say we'll say that as they open fire, you just kind of uh, you you roll into this room, and just close the door behind you, and you guys are all. And then they just light up this. Uh, as it hits the glass, you realize the glass is completely bulletproof. So I love that Gary rolled a crit to close a door. Well, I mean, it was uh, he was going to get shot before he had a chance to do so. Yeah, I rolled a crit to dodge four and a half people's worth of damage. Yeah, I'm okay pretty with much that. I, I, I let him uh, act out a turn to close the door. Um, after Which is what I was crit. going to do on my turn. Yeah. So, thanks. The crit took care of that. The crit took care of that. Yeah, now you're and completely safe. Uh, and they're, gonna, they're immediately on their turn going to try to uh, start wedging the door open. Because as soon as you close it, it locks. Uh, and you do see a hard lock on it. It is your turn. Oh, sweet. I'll hit that hard lock because I hope they don't find the desk. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll latch the door, clink with an extra lock. And uh, I turn and observe the room now, which is Brecht and three and a third getting ready to get scrappy with these people with their, with their wolvers, right? With their claws? Yeah, three and a third. Uh, go ahead and roll a contested melee check. So just a regular melee check, essentially. Or, uh, actually, you can do evasion. It's up to you. Uh, when you say melee check, what do you mean by that? Uh, just your sword. You gotcha. Can, you can defend yourself with your katana, or you can move. Those are your options. Gotcha. If I Is there a benefit, for example, if I defend with my katana, am I able to parry or something like it that? It is possible to hit them in the exchange. Copy that. I'm going to go ahead and do the attack, then, and, and use the katana instead of evasion and maybe add any more words that I need to while I'm looking for the button. This is not easy to do on a phone, y'all. <laughs> yeah, you actually do pretty well considering you're using a phone. Uh, so, yeah. Um, it is a dead tie. Uh, Defender gets the tie, which means she takes another gouge out of your katana. Uh, you notice that you have several already from before because uh, you've been in similar situations. Uh, and then her other claw is going to come in uh, it is, yep. Go ahead and defend again! Uh, this one should be not too bad. <laughs> and this is also weapon defense? Yeah, same thing. Cool. Yes, yes, yes. She gonna get it. <laughs> and then after that, it's immediately your turn. You, you parry both the claws, and then, uh, uh, she gets in a stance, like, ready to fight you. Okay. Um, what's her counterpart doing? Uh, you would have to... I mean, I guess you can peek. Uh, he's still standing there with his hands up as uh, him and Brecht are, like, facing off. Gotcha. Okay, well, if Brecht got it, then... I mean, this lady means business, so <laughs> I'm going to give her the business, man. I want to attack her with my katana. Absolutely. So we're gonna go for a whoosh whoosh. Give her the and whoosh. Whoosh. Yeah. See what happens with her. And whoosh number one. Ah. Not the text button. Whoosh. Oh. That's a crit. That's a crit. It's a critical hit. That's what I'm talking and about. And then uh, a regular. So the first one uh, comes in and you, you hit her dead on. Uh, the second one, uh, she, like, rolls with the hit and, like, uh, blocks with her, her, uh, her wolvers in her palms like this. It's like, Shh, the second one. Uh, but the first one does hit home. Uh, she is not wearing any armor either. Neither of them are. Hmm. So, uh, go ahead and do that full damage. Full damage coming right up. 3d6. <laughs> Gary, you have a conditional boot. I'm going to use it. It's not <laughs> <Okay>. conditional. Let's <laughs> okay. making sure you saw it. Uh, yeah, so that damage is what? Six? Yes, six for damage. So if she was wearing armor, that would do nothing. But since she is not, she gets... You, you draw blood. 
And she'll she'll let out a little Ur, like a grunt. Um As all this is going on, uh I'll let Brecht notice. Uh you look up, there's a man standing up there now. Um He is wearing a lab coat. Uh he has like slick backed hair. He is uh, a white guy. Of course. He's about <gasps> 45. Uh, and I'm going to give him the good old classic, like, he has that, like, uh, whited out eye with the scar on it, because I like it. Yeah, hell yeah. He points some kind of gun. Uh, it looks weird. At the guy on the table. And he pulls the trigger, and you hear it. And then uh, he goes, and he wa he heads towards the door calmly, like the one behind him. Uh, the guy on the table, <laughs> he searched like you hear about ah ah through like he has a muzzle on and he was unconscious, but now he's awake and he's screaming and you hear <laughs> as his he just gets huge very quickly. So much, so quickly, in fact, that his skin rips off of him. Uh, I throw my shield and jump to slide down the shield on top of the staircase with my shotgun <laughs> racked with a slug ready to go, and I'm going to fire at this creature. Okay, this so go ahead and get that athletics to roll down this shield real quick. Uh, you have Ath a boon. That's a 14 athletics. So you skate down these stairs. You have your shotgun levied. This thing rips off of the table. And it is about seven and a half feet tall all of a sudden. Uh, and its muscles are dripping blood. As it is, uh, it just, it has grown three sizes like the Grinch's heart. Um, as you point your shotgun at it. It's really uh, going to ruin my Christmas. As you point your shotgun at it. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to pick this up next week. Uh, next time on Fresh Out the Box. Uh, thank Fresh. you everybody for watching. Uh, it's been a hell of an uh, audience, hell of a stream. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, make sure to tune oh in tomorrow uh, at uh, 8 Central for our weekly Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game with Leighton and Gary. Uh, make sure to turn in this Friday for our uh, game with Amit Moshe, uh, the creator of City of Mist. Uh, we're going to be giving away a copy of City of Mist to everyone viewing, uh, so make sure that you tune in for that. And make sure to tune in next week, Wednesday, at 8 o'clock Central to see what happens next in the Operating Room of Terror. Uh, I've been Jahanan on the Game Master. I'm Casualty CDG, but you can call me Gary. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Casualty CDG or on Facebook, on YouTube at Fresh Out the Box. Uh, thanks for coming, guys. And I am Leighton. I am Levite. I have been with Fresh Out the Box, and you will see me tomorrow night uh, with a very different accent. I will see you then. <laughs> uh, either of you, uh, Kevin or uh, Matt, you want to say anything? You plug in anything? You guys working on anything? No, just Matt right now. Just Matt right now. That's fine. Just, just Kevin for now, man. Absolutely. Keeping it rolling. Uh, see you guys uh, tomorrow, Friday, and next week. So uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.